Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Savage Saturdays here on the Drinking Bros Podcast. I'm your host, Derek White. Joining me, as always, it's Owen. It's Owen. We just wanted to take a second and let you know that today's episode of Savage Saturday is sponsored by GhostBed. GhostBed's been a loyal sponsor of the Drinking Bros Podcast for over four years. Everybody loves GhostBed. I love GhostBed. I'm the proud owner of two ghost bed mattresses and two pillows and right now if you buy a mattress from ghost bed you get two free pillows and if you go to ghostbed.com slash drinking bros you can save 25 percent that's ghostbed.com slash drinking bros grab yourself a mattress two free pillows get some good sleep enjoy the show we're back everybody's got snacks welcome back to savage saturdays here on the Drinking Bros podcast, got me, Derek, Owen, got Owen, getting right back into it with our special guest, Sean Ensley. Hello. Here for part two of our interview with Sean Ensley. Uh, this is episode 25, I think. No, this has got to be 26. 26. We just did 25, didn't we? We did. This is episode 20, 26. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're trying to do math on the spot. We got a couple infantry <laughs> guys in the room. Guys, We're not good at that. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is part two. With our good friend Sean Ensley. If you have not yet listened to episode 25, go back and listen to that. It's a good one. Yeah. I love hearing about schools. I love hearing about yeah. the funnels to different uh, different types of units. I love hearing mm-hmm. about people's experience going through there because it's something I wanted to do and didn't didn't get all the way through it. Yeah. Me either. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to see him. You got to taste. You got to see. Got to see they, got to, uh, yeah. I had the opportunity to speak at my old high school a few years back, and I was like, let me just preface all of this. And it was under the under the uh, guise of like, hey, come talk to our ROTC program and stuff. Right. Like, just so we all know, you're hearing from a failure. Like you're hearing from a guy <laughs> who did not get his tab. Uh, I can tell you what I learned along the way. But, uh, yeah, yeah, we should preface that with not a, not a group guy. Didn't make it. Yeah. Right. Gave it my best. Yeah, so where we where we left off, um, we're just gonna get right back into it. Where we left off last week is game's over. Game over. Game over. Military you're out. dream dead. You're, you're out. Yeah, you're fucking. And the thing that I pursued this, so this since was, I was like 18 was yeah. off the table. Right. Yeah, so this was uh, um, February 2007. Mm-hmm. You're out. Valentine's Day, actually. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> As if I didn't have enough reason to hate it. <laughs> yeah. right. I'm eating my feelings. <laughs> So what the fuck, what the fuck? That yeah. was, how, how did that, uh, man? So that's what, what, what was next, or how? That's where I. So I mean, you know, I lose my military dream. I'm crushed. Uh, all of my buddies who are group guys are are doing me the honor of saying, like, dude, like, you know, respect. Right. Y- you know, you should have made it. Right. Um, you did. Am I okay? Yeah, okay. a little closer. Uh, you should have made it, uh, and you didn't. And it's it's just like one of those things where. You know, when you go into a pipeline, the thing they tell you is the attrition rate, like one in, you know, two and, you know, one in four of you will not, will be here at the end. And you right. look around and if you've, if you're like any other red blooded American male, you're like, well, I'm that one. Yeah. So obviously, sorry but, for but, you guys. but all, you, all you think about is like, oh, if, 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 if I just don't quit, I that's will right. make it. And that's, but there's shit that happens outside of your fucking happens. control. But, and, and but like, you don't think about that, you but you got to consider you, And you yeah. really can't. Like, you can't plan for it. Don't yeah. prepare for you it. You can't it's think like, about yeah. what happens if I get hurt. Because like, if you, it's almost like if you put that energy out, you, you're kind of begging that outcome. You will it yeah. into you will it's it's like, existence, it's like It's like buying life insurance and betting yeah. against yourself, right? right? Like, no. But I mean, <laughs> so more, on, more on that in a minute. I'm sorry, I'm, so, I'm sorry for all the good life lessons I'm giving you here, Derek, this weekend. Uh, forget it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah man so milit- so game over dream is dead you will not be a green beret uh you will not even go back to the line in the 82nd and and pursue that you are done and so i do what a lot of people do is like, i'll just go home and regroup and home for me is denver colorado uh and i move back home and my mom and dad, of course, are like, you're welcome to come live here. And I love my parents. We had a great relationship, but I'm 26. Yeah. And I'm like, it's a hard move. Rough. And yeah. just because, like, you know, it's hard to go back into that. And so my older brother, Jay, and his wife, Tina, had just bought a new home over in a, sub, a suburb of Denver. And they're like, listen, you're welcome to move in here with us. And then Jay kind of pulls me aside and is like, 
for like six months. <laughs> you know, like that's yeah. not because he and Tina are newly married, and he's like, let's not turn this into that's, a fucking. That's yeah, right. Let's okay. not. We don't want you to be like you, me, and Dupree on the couch. You know, mm -hmm. and so uh, it's one of my favorite movies. It's underrated, honestly, dude. I it's fucking underrated. love like old like you, me, and Dupree. Yeah, I, I have, I have to, I have to rewatch that. And um and also um I think the movie is called like Life with Dan. It's a uh no, I've heard of that. Mi Michael Scott's character. What's that actor's name? Oh, um Oh. Cuz he just did Space Force. What's his yeah. fucking name? Why am I blanking out? Anyways, it's a, it's a, it's well, That's like, going to bother me. So it's so those like, yeah. Who is that guy? Yeah. Steve Carell. Jesus. Steve Carell. Yeah. Okay. Like Come Steve on, Sean. Like, I've only had life, three beers. Life with Dan. <laughs> right. I think, I think is what it's called. Life with Dan. Okay. And uh, you, me, and Dupree. That yeah. Was, uh, um, yeah. That's a funny. So, so okay. And so, so like, and so listen. When I'm when I'm getting when I'm getting chat medical boarded out or whatever, uh, I have to use up some leave, terminal leave. So I come home and during that visit. I get connected with uh, my sister-in-law's brother and his business partner, and they run a, dist a skincare distribution company. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, we'll pay you some money under the table to come do some stuff around the office. And I go over there just to make some walking around money. No real intention of, like, looking for a job, but also completely lost. Yeah, like, no compass, hell? like, right. no idea and where I, to go I next. I have a degree in criminal criminal justice. I don't really want to be a policeman or right. an officer now. And it's because I know people who have done that job, and... I'm just like, you know, I don't know if that's for me. Mm -hmm. um, mad respect to those guys uh, and gals, but didn't think it was for me. Um, and uh, so I'm home. And so while I'm home on that terminal leave, I'm working for these guys and they're like, hey, would you like to work here? They're like, we'll, you know, we'll pay you like 35 a year and give you some equity options down the road and you can have a commission. And like, and I've loved them. Like those guys were great. And I was like, selling skincare. I mean, it's not what I would have picked for myself, but it's right, also that's fucking cares. weird. Like, yeah, that's right. You know, because like, actually, I met them, mm -hmm. and you know, we had like a dinner at their place right. or something. It was real right. nice. And that when me and you kind of caught up, and we'll get to this, but I, I met these people, and but it's just like fucking weird. You went from that to the right one extreme. To one, kind of the yeah, other, you're right? like you're like a, a, a trigger puller yeah. going through the Q course. Next <laughs> thing you know, you're selling fucking talking Cream, about your skin. creams, yeah. bro. Yeah. Creams talking about your skincare routine. Right. Right. Spas and Let's shit. Let's exfoliate like that, a little yeah. bit, you know. Is that what you do? You do that yeah, first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, and so, so what what ends up happening is when I get out of the army, and this is a blessing. Like I had a job lined up, yeah. and it, maybe it wasn't a job that I should have had, but like it was a really smooth. It was a nice transition because I didn't have to go back and like be broke and be like worried. Because I didn't remember, I took no disability. I got no rating. I had a severance, which I had used to pay off some credit card debt yeah. and had a little bit left. And mm -hmm. so I'm living with my brother and his wife, but I have this job and I've got this job and it's stable. And it, this is like 2007. So the economy is still okay, but it's like right on the precipice. Oh yeah. About it's coming. She's, She's about, about to go. go. She's yeah, about to go. Yeah. I didn't the know The Titanic has just hit the right. iceberg. And yeah. so like, <laughs> the plane has crashed into yeah. the mountain. Yeah. And so, um, I, after a few months I have saved up enough and like, uh, for me to put a down payment on this sweet little condo um, downtown. Is that, is that the condo? The condo yeah, downtown. Nice, like, yeah. And it was just like this little bachelor pad. Also, uh, starting in 2005, when I come back from Iraq, yeah, I Sorry, I didn't add, now, I, know, I know about this. I so yeah, here's this story. Like, you're, we're getting into Shelly, right? That's right. Dude, you're, okay, right. so your wife, Shelly, is an amazing fucking human. And I Incredible. remember, but I remember, so one of the things I remember about you, remember about you in the army is you would um, take leave and go further away maybe than you should have. Yeah. yeah. But that's that I mean, fucking, if you're trying to be a Green Beret, you got to live that life. Right. You got to, yeah. That was, yeah. <laughs> the, the, yeah. the white Corvette yeah. didn't mean anything yeah. to me. Yeah. Clandestine yeah. leave. Right. Yeah. I, got, I got caught on uh -huh. a couple white Corvettes, and I, my leadership just covered for me. Those are yeah. callbacks, right? Emergency yeah. callbacks mm -hmm. to base, and I'd outside of my travel pass radius. Yeah. But my wife is from St. Louis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we had met when I was still in Fort Collins at Colorado State. Mm -hmm. We had... We had never dated, but we'd been friends. How did you guys meet, actually? If she was... It's a funny story. Like, yeah. one of my buddies met one of her girlfriends on spring break in Cancun. Oh, good. In the year. Yeah. yeah. I like how the story started. <laughs> yeah. Right. I think they were doing... Are those a puka shells? Yeah. Fuck yeah, yeah. baby. Yeah, they they are. Are. My tips were fully bleached <laughs> at the time. <laughs> Full frost. Fully bleached. Yeah. Yeah. Full frost. I, I look, thought I looked like Sugar Ray. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I probably ended up looking more like Guy Fieri, but <laughs> I... Uh, What's wrong with that? Nothing. Hey, yeah, okay. Like, <laughs> gross, grocery games. Yeah. It's out of my house mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. Uh, so they meet. I think they were doing a Bible study or something. And then... Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> they come back, they keep in touch, and I, I'm introduced to this group of women in St. Louis, and we, we all become buddies, fast mm-hmm. friends. Not a lot of, like, dating and stuff, but, like, all buddies. They end up moving to Fort Collins, and Shells and I are just, like, friendly, you know, from 2001 until for a couple of years before I leave, graduate college and leave. And when I leave for the Army, she leaves to go back home to St. Louis. As luck would have it, right before we deploy in 04, Frankie is dating a woman from St. Louis, and he's like, I'm going to go see her for the weekend before we leave. And Wooly and I jump in the car and go out there with him. And on the way out, I'm like, I used to know some girls from St. Louis. Let me see. I track, I track down a number and and I, this is pre social media or anything. Mm -hmm. Call them up. And I'm like, Hey, this is Sean and Ensley and we're coming to town. And she's like, yeah, come, you guys can crash on the floor of my, you know, my apartment or whatnot. And so we reconnect and hang out and it's awesome. And she's like, we should like keep in touch and see each other again. I'm like, funny thing is, I'm leaving like next week for Iraq. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we get the whole time we're deployed, um, you know, the writing f- letters and the stuff first time like of the, that. the first part of the deployment, there were no internet cafes. There weren't a lot of, you know, and so she's writing me and sending yeah. me care packages and stuff and they don't catch up to us for a while. That's yeah. funny. Cause we're around, you know, we're bouncing around. I loved that about being deployed, man. Or for mm-hmm. my letters, I retaught myself cursive. And I was just, mm-hmm. I would just love writing. I don't know. I just, I loved that lifestyle. Yeah. And like writing letters. And, and like, so like, like you make fun of me for not being like Mr. Dude. Technology and stuff. I just, <laughs> I just have a real deep passion <laughs> for like an old way of doing things. You yeah. know, I really, I really loved the writing letters and Dude, stuff like yeah. that. So I still have, have all mine are right there yeah, in I the closet. I have two or three shoe boxes filled with letters. I, I got, got some same, basic yeah. too. Same. Yep. And so. So she's sending me stuff, and then once we have the ability to, I'm communicating back. And, and so when we come back in 05, my first little four-day weekend, I go to St. Louis for 4th of July, and we have a blast. And I get the end of that trip, I'm like, look, I know it's, like, long distance, and that can be hard, and I'm not going to, like, be the possessive guy that, like, hangs on you. But I, I'm telling you, like, I my lifestyle in, in Fayetteville, I don't really want to date anybody else. I would like to date you. And I'm like, and so she agrees, and we're just going to do long distance kind of casual and um, I'm like, I'm pursuing this Q course thing in this SF career. And she's like, okay, well, we'll kind of see where it goes. Right. Because she, she's from St. Louis and mm-hmm. doesn't really, I don't you know, her family's there and stuff. Yeah. And so uh, my plan was I, I got 18 Charlie, I got French, and I was going to go to third group or 10th group. 10th group is in Carson, Fort Carson, down the Springs. Mm-hmm. So the thought was... If I don't get third group, I'll get 10th, and then at least I'll be in my home state, and then Shelly can move out and be the SF wife and yada, yada, yada. So that falls apart. Now we're back in 2007. I'm home in Denver. And another big silver lining is now I have a chance to have this continue this relationship with my wife, who may or may not have enjoyed being an SF wife. She wasn't at yeah. she wasn't your wife at the time. That's right. You guys are just dating. Just da- so and long fucking, distance dating. You're going through that shit. Yeah, yeah. So So I'm like, hey, I'm in Denver. My military dream is over. I really, I love you. Um, I'm setting up shop here. I would love for you to come out and give us a chance, you know, and move in with me. And so she kind of goes through this thing where she's like, well, why wouldn't you just move to St. Louis if that's what you want? I'm like, totally fair. You're from St. Louis. I'm from Denver. This is where I'm going to be. And so we kind of break up there for a minute. Oh, okay. No shit. Yeah. Yeah, And so that was kind of like, oh, gas on the fire. I'm like, God damn it. Like, can I just get a break here? Yeah, right. And so thankfully, so I had a job. I had this condo that she was going to move into with me. She didn't, which probably ended up being a a good thing. Mm -hmm. She She's like, you know what? Change of mind. I'm going to move out there. So she picks up and moves out without a job prospect or anything, gets her own apartment. What made her fucking change her mind? This. Like, yeah. I mean, it's pretty fucking obvious. obvious, Say no more, man. I'm on board. I'm on. Say no more. It's a stupid question. (laughs) Just stupid (laughs) fucking question. You seen? You even made me move to Denver. Like, you you didn't ask me to move to Denver. I was just like, I want to be by that guy. That's right. Like, yeah. So, Spellbound. Yeah. So she, uh, yeah. so she, she moves out. She moves out. She gets an apartment. Gets a job in two weeks. It's it's now the job that she's had for ten years. Oh, but when she when she moved to Denver, she yeah. lived separately. That's right. Which probably really? was a good thing because my yeah. condo was like seven hundred square feet. We'd been long distance for three years. We'd never mm-hmm. even dated living in yeah. the same town. <laughs> Wait, Welcome you're the kind of motherfucker right? that leaves fucking peanut butter knives on the counter. That's right. I can't live with you. Yeah. I yeah. washed my socks in the sink. I hope that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hate pants. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so she moves uh, out, and uh, so I've got this job, which is feeling like it could be a career. I've got this condo, and I've got this incredible woman who has chosen to move to Denver and give us a shot. 
And so those things, those aspects of my life are going great. Yeah. Like on the surface, it's like I have found success after the army, uh, but I was struggling pretty hard. Yeah, because like, did you feel, or yeah, that's a weird thing, man. It's like you're, you know, when you know you're living your plan B. Yeah. When we're, uh, 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 we're, we're conditioned to pursue plan A right. relentlessly. Right. And nobody tells you what to fucking do when you have to revert to plan B. Yeah. And even though you like you find <laughs> like you find new purpose and passion, but somewhere deep inside for guys like us, we always know. And that's, that's right. something that's um we can't like people don't understand it about us and we can't expect them to understand it about us cuz That's right. But like we're always living. It's like are you truly happy? It's like yeah. And my it, life is so far li like, or like, just, you can say like, my life is so fucking good, but, but, and, that, yeah. and I mean, how privileged yeah. and fortunate are we? Yeah. Our plan mm -hmm. B's are so incredible, sure. yeah. you know? And, mm -hmm. yeah. but the other thing that you sort of allude to there is like when you're pursuing a, a special operations pipeline or you're in that course, like everything is about winning. Like yeah. you either win or you're a loser Yeah, and you either make it or you're a don't. And like, you know, there, there's a lot of like, and, you come to sort of being like, well, at least I had the courage to try. Like you think about the attrition rate at Buds and it's like, but man, do you even, do you even have the balls to sack up and go to Buds? Like you're already one of the hardest dudes on the A planet. lot of people were shitting on me for quitting PRC. Right. A lot of the dudes that didn't even go. Right, exactly. You know, and it's usually, like, those, yeah, it's usually like, those people like the old Theodore Roosevelt thing about the man in the arena. Like everyone's yeah. got an opinion mm -hmm. if they're yeah. sitting outside the ring. Right, yeah. So, you know, to just go and try all those things, great. But in the back of my mind, I feel like a loser Yeah, because well, like, I aimed for it and yeah. missed. Mm -hmm. And what Owen and I were talking about on the break is like without the physical scar of an injury or a missing limb, I felt like, a, like I was just like, people are, I don't look like anything's wrong with me. So yeah. when I tell people I got hurt because a heat injury is an injury, yeah. the, the next thing is like, well, what happened? And I'm like, right. heat stroke. So and I, you can kind of see in their face where they're like, yeah. Stroke. So I have the advantage now of having a visible advantage. Yeah. Well, like, but yeah. no, for, but for that, that four years when I was limb salvage, couldn't like, cause I got shot through the knee Yeah, and my leg was there and, but it wasn't like super noticeable. Right. I walked with a limp and you things. definitely saw I, both I, sides of that. I had a, I had a limp, but you know, like, and, and, um, it was weird because people, if they, if they looked at my leg, they'd be like, Oh, you tear your acl and my leg was fucking crooked and i had overgrown bone remember my leg yeah, that yeah. Thing was fucked up it. man right and i did it but uh, but it wasn't so it was there but it mm -hmm. but i could wear pant i was wearing pants and people just didn't see yeah the, and like the, like and what and and you went through your thing okay you know and but and i went through my thing that's fucking trauma yeah it's it's fucking legit tra like looking back i'm like fuck dude i experienced trauma at a mm -hmm. young age and i I, oh fuck it's weird when you just you're um you know what you've been through and people around you don't know what you've been right, through right but it you so it's just it's this disconnect yeah you know yeah and so for you it's still yeah it's, it's just like and so, so you I don't mean, know how to talk about it and things right. like that but and so you feel like almost maybe like shame where it's, but it's misplaced. And to the uninitiated, you know? yeah. like to a lot of civilians, they don't know what the Q course is. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. When I tell people I was trying to be SF, they're like, Oh, like a ranger. And I'm like, yeah. And sometimes you're just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah. two yeah. different things. Navy I, seal. I yeah. don't want to go <laughs> yeah. down the rabbit hole with you. Right. Yeah. I tried mm -hmm. for this specialized program. I didn't make it. Yeah. And so, and you know, again, and they're like, uh, my peer like, actually, it was really fucking devastating. And right. I'm just like, so right. fucked up about it. I my, think. And like my, my, my peer group and my buddies are like, you know, they're, they're doing their best to pump me up. But at the same time, like, I just feel like I feel displaced. I feel like yeah. I, and I'm like, and I'm 27 because 26. Yeah. So now I'm like 27 that year. And I've 27 is a young man, but I feel like I've lived my lifetime and yeah. like everything that happens from here on out is falling action and it doesn't matter. Yeah. And like the, I've already did the coolest thing I'm going to do in my life. And so this is all, this is all just like going through the motions. Yeah. Which is nice. a bad way to live. Yeah, it's a right. very lost feeling. But it's, <laughs> but it's um it's common. It's yeah. The, it's the trap. Yeah. And so and, and I think everybody has to go through it. Totally. Yeah. And you have to find your own way out yeah. too, a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. and, and think and like, you know, what we what we talk about and what we'll get into here is like so two thousand seven, eight, nine, again, I'm I ha I have this condo, I've got this amazing woman, the girlfriend of my life, I've got this career. 
And, you know, the economy tanks and the money gets tight and those things happen and come and go. But at the end of the day, like it's starting, we've talked about how PTSD sort of becomes a bucket, a catch all for any sort of trauma. Yeah. And I don't, I've never lost a wink of sleep over anything that I did or saw or experienced. I think my trauma or my, and people are, are want to call it something. I think it was like separation anxiety. Like I was depressed yeah. that I didn't that I didn't do more, that I didn't get to go see more of combat, that I didn't get to do more. Yeah. Did you ever have or do you? So the way you got separated, you could have stayed in in a different role. Do you ever kind of think no. about no? Yeah. So because, like that because that, I just that, like that thought that thought comes into my mind sometimes. I'm like did I quit too early? Did I give up? Um and then I'm like, well, no, yeah, no. I was just, I was just wondering because I've thought about that. It's over a, the years it's a great, it's a great question. And um, you know, like you see that dude, the machine, like the SF dude that's on a combat scuba team that's above knee amputee. What's that's his my, name? I'm, I'm friend with uh, Nick. Nick. Yeah. And so, oh his, my god. So his that injury dude is fucking. He's incredible. Yeah. Right? And so his injury happens after he's already a team guy, a group guy. Yeah. And, and he got his leg cut off while he was while in he's fucking in, service, and oh, they let him do. Yeah. So. And so, like, it's if you've already made it to this point. Yeah. You might still be able to salvage part of your career, but as a rec as a recruit trying to go through the course, like right. you're done. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I've I've thought like if I had reclassed to that non combat arms, non deployable MOS and stayed in the army, I'd be staying in the army for the things that I liked least about it. Yep. Yeah. The like the the shaving the face and the and the we, starching the uniforms. Gotta get him on the podcast. He's oh like, yeah. I talk to him frequently. Oh, that'd be we, crazy. We shoot the shit. Like really? that guy is the fucking. He's, yeah, he's doing the damn thing. He's, he's yeah, yeah right. But he was already in the fucking yeah. Mm -hmm. so. And so um yeah man so I, I honestly I never regretted getting out because I know that it wouldn't have been the same and I'd be chasing yeah. the shadow of the thing that was great like it's, but it's weird how those questions enter your mind and right. you have to challenge so like for me it's like I'm faced with that question sometimes or like you know when I think about like so I got shot on a house raid and sometimes I go back I'm like did I do everything right and like new 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 procedures are different like I did I like we we went by the book yeah at the time. But a few years down the road, we learned that those weren't the best procedures. The book yeah. changed. But like, yeah. And I but think like, like, had, like they, they'd taken away your dynamic breach and all that yeah. stuff too, right? So you guys are bullshit. hammering your way on a <laughs> yeah. chained metal gate. And yeah. like, hello, hello. I will say. Yeah. Wake up, please. The thing that I've second guessed for a long time was like, you know, heat on that second heat stroke. What if I had just like slowed down and stopped running? Yeah. Guys were doing that. And like at one point they're like, they took a, a weaker runner and they're like, hold on to Sergeant Inslee's belt. And I'm like, please don't like yeah. I'm dying. Yeah. And so it's like, part of me is like, well, those guys that slowed down and quit running went on to get their tabs and get their berets. And you know what? They probably went so, on to be great so, dudes. So like that's great soldiers. So like that kind of like those kind of weird instances that that's why I quit PRC the second time. It's cause there's just a lot of, there was, there was, there was people that I didn't think deserved to pass passing. Yeah, and I had uh, my, see a little bit of that. My lesson was that doesn't matter to me in yeah. my life. Yeah, like the other if you people, didn't want it. Yeah, right. You're you're just, know, if you're just doing forgot, it to do it, I forgot, or I didn't. I it's not that I forgot. I didn't know how important it was to me. Yeah, at the time. Yeah, and so ultimately, what I would, what I came to realize, like Owen mentioned on the, I think the last session was, you start to realize, like even okay, so I don't have the heat stroke that day. And I go through the training and I get my tab and I get to group and we go to Afghanistan and I have that heat stroke on the top of the fucking mountain in the yeah. Tora Bora. Mm -hmm. yep. And now it's, now it's not just me who's in trouble. I've just damned like the whole, the whole ODA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that helped me to be like, you know what? It happened for a reason. Okay. Come into grip. And it's time heals a lot of wounds. Like, yeah. like where I'm at now today versus where I was then is night and day. Age and you know. maturity also have play a huge role in that That's too. That's right. Yep. And the opportunity to get back into the service of your peers. So, like, around the time that I was getting hurt in 07, you were getting shot. Wasn't that yeah. the same year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. June. And I got, so, you, you're out in 07, and I got shot in June. Right. Yeah, so. so, we basically lost track of each other for two or three years. And it yeah. was around 2010, and I'm still working for that distribution company. And But now things have gotten to be where... I'm feeling kind of stuck there. I'm like, what am I, what am I going to do for a career? I don't know that this is where I can be no detriment to them, but I'm like, I don't feel like this is where I can be for 20 years. Yeah. And that's probably, that's showing up in my work. I'm sure they're like, Sean's kind of phoning it in or just seems distracted or lost. And 
So around that time, I see you on social media, and the first thing I notice is he's funny. I'm like, I don't remember why to, but I didn't like we didn't know each other that well. And I like, was weird back. You're then. weird. <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> but like you were my kind of weird. Like, I got it. And yeah. like you're doing a lot of like Dwight 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 Schrute quotes and yeah. stuff. And like, I get that Schrute bucks. Yeah. You know? And I reached out to Teeter and I'm like, what happened to Whitea? I didn't know. I didn't even know that you'd been injured or anything. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. Teeter caught me up and told me the whole thing. And so I reached out and. Um, I don't know if this is the part of the story you want me to tell. I mean, I guess say if fucking anything. Sure. Okay. I would love your perspective of those years. Okay. Yeah. So, so like, uh, I reached out and I just said, Hey man, like you seem like a dude who's struggling a little bit and maybe a little lost. And my, my perception of these memories is that I said something like I've been through that myself, my injury, not as catastrophic as yours, but I had a dream taken from me. Yeah. And I'm sure I could, I could if enough t time, I could probably dig up those earlier right, emails. Yeah. You know? and I said, I had my dream taken too. And yeah. I will tell you that I have found happiness again. And my happiness was my relationship with my wife. Mm -hmm. Now, now still girlfriend then. Yeah. But, um, my relationship with my friends, my relationship with my family, my work is my work, but like I've found some peace and I got into motorcycles and I'm riding, you know, doing those things and yeah. I'm skiing again and really loving the skiing and, so I just was kind of saying, like, I know it seems really shitty. Yeah. But I will tell you from the guy who's a little bit further down the race road from you that it, it gets a little better. And so of that communication, we just started checking in on each Shooting other once the in a while. A little bit. Yeah, and yeah. like I'd see you drop off Facebook for a while and maybe I'd ping you or something. Then you'd pop back up. And so that takes us to 2000. 10 or 11? Yeah, so... It was December 2010. December 2010. And yeah. I, I was yeah. like, I had put on, like so many of us do after the after the Army, I I had no meniscus left. So I had torn the two years out, out of the Army, I tore both meniscus and one my left and my How'd right. How'd you do that? You just fucking One time I was, doing, I, was doing, uh, I was doing ab work, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> you on the, tore your meniscus? On the gym floor, no, and I went okay. to get up really fast, okay. and I had my leg under me, and I popped it. And oh, no so shit. That was the first yeah. one. And then I think the second one was skiing, and then it fully tore when I was scuba diving in Costa Rica. When I was okay. finning, and it, yeah. whatever was a small tear turned into a full tear. So back-to-back -back years, back-to-back -back knee surgeries, no meniscus. And I used to like running, yeah. like starting from, like I said, in 2000 or in like 1998, when I started running, I'd run ever since. Yeah. It's part of my life. And yeah. so that I talked to the doctor, they're like, you can either run or you can ski. We probably wouldn't recommend that you do both because you're already going to need new knees sooner than you would normally. Yeah. So I chose skiing, and so I got heavy because I'm a big I, I'm a big dude. So in 2010, you're 29, 30 years old, or that's something right. Like yeah, that? yeah, yep, mm -hmm. that's right. Just turned, yep. just turned 30 in 2009, and I'm kind of looking for like that's when I got into riding motorcycles. I was like, I need a hobby that demands I pay attention and like all this stuff, and so I just sort of write this mission statement or whatever and say, I've neglected my fitness. I don't have a goal. I'm going to do one of these tough mutters, one of these tough mutters that I've been seeing. And anyone who wants to join me is welcome, but I'm going to expect you to train and put it put out and we're going to go up there and try to run it pretty fast. So this is this is the moment I reference so often. Oh yeah. As it's like I just randomly saw and this is and and from so like this was at the time in my life where I was like you either need to fucking kill yourself or stop thinking about killing yourself all the yeah. goddamn time. Or like fucking, it was like my make it or break it point in life. I just had been doing nothing, mm -hmm. like doing nothing. I was just, I was, I was, you know, I wasn't in trouble with the law and stuff anymore, but I just wasn't, I didn't have a focus or purpose or something like that. So when I always talk about this first um, Tough Mudder, I talk about like, I just, you know, saw Sean's post one day and he... Um, yeah. This is the post, and from, you were and you were in Colorado at the time, yeah, or no, you were I lived, in, lived in Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah, we had still mm -hmm. never like met each other face to face since yeah. 2000. We were just right. online friends, been like right? You know? Who had been in the same six years, years. Right. but yeah. he was also like a like you know like in the army. Like I looked up to you then, and you, like you just you have a commanding presence every every That's room right. you enter. You know, yeah. <laughs> like and you that. did then, and you do now, and you're well spoken. Or it's just a guy like. I I need to know that person. Yeah, and um, it, it, and so this was a starting point in our in our new relationship. That's right. It was fucking weird that it was ten years ago. Ten, can you believe it? Fucking ten years and ago. And so he reaches out and he's <laughs> like, "Hey man," and like so I'm like, in this post, I'm like, I'd like to keep the team to like five or six or seven people because I want us to go 
run and try right. to like try to do and our you best. Were, and you were kind of using this as your reason. My motivation to get, to get back like, into. To get like scratching a little bit of an itch. That's right. To like do some fucking I missed the t- I missed shit. The t- yeah. I missed the shared suffering of going through something like this. Totally. You know? And um, so I'm like, so if you, so all, all are welcome, but if you apply, you had better like, we're going to be doing weekly training runs here. Show the here. fuck up You better day. show up, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And, oh, um, yeah, you guys did do team training yeah. for that and stuff, yeah. And so mm-hmm. quickly, like, the team, pretty soon it was 25 people. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what happens when you have a fucking commanding presence, guess, you know? And, uh, and so Derek hits me up. He's like, hey, man, like, if there's room, could I join your team? And I'm like, let me think for a second. Yes, of course. Are you kidding me? Like, you're the Which, one I'm least was, worried about. It like, was, it, But it was interesting because that was such a desperation move for me. That was almost like... But it didn't feel I, that way to me. Yeah, it just but, felt like but I was like, I was scared to reach out, and I felt weird, and I was like clinging to you and that. Yeah, somehow, some way, as like my last ditch effort to try to fucking find a reason to stay alive. It's, it's so interesting because it's just that perspective of you, you never know what the other person's going through right. at yeah. that time. Yeah, and, and I was so probably like alone and super sad in my apartment, and I was like, didn't want to write you. But yeah. I, I just did. I or like I had the nuts to write you and say like, "Hey man, can I join your team?" And like, click and you send. Were so, right? You were so quick and welcoming. Yeah, and you're like, dude, we don't just want you. Like, we need you. We need you on this team. <laughs> you know? And like, it's funny how like it just goes to show like you don't like to your point. I had no idea how big of a moment that was for him, and it was it was a big moment for me too, just because I was like I could tell that he'd been suffering, but it, it wasn't like some grandiose gesture. I'm just like, yeah, man. Yeah. But you never know what some little thing that you do is going to mean to somebody else. Yeah. Every, right. every, every, everything since then, every interview, every, that's the turning point. Right. That exchange was the turning point. And, and it's funny. Is, Cause like, and it, it's funny. Cause it's a stupid fucking, it's a mud, mud right. It's stupid. It's like in the comparison of scheme of things, it's like the easiest thing you've ever done, Yeah, but it, it gave you. And so like Derek's like, well, you know, Sean pulled me up and I'm like, no man, I reached out and you pulled yourself up because then you were the one that had to do the work. You had to do the training. You had to get yourself ready and training on that shitty leg. Cause that shit and, was fucked up. And right. I was, it was one of those things like I did most of my conditioning on an elliptical or I was doing like uh, 90 minutes to two hours of conditioning on different cardio machines. And I would run a mile with the, with a, with your with human leg. Shit, like, and, and I had to leg. do, I, yeah. I basically had to run as if I had a prosthesis cause my leg didn't bend. And, and at the apartment I lived in, there was a, a loop and it hurt so bad. And I would fucking run. And sometimes Billy would run with me cause yeah. he was living with me at the time. Um, and it hurt so bad. And sometimes it was demoralizing cause I was like, I don't know if I can do that tough mutter. But I just, I just, I kept training yep. and I showed up and it's like, you know, that Tough Mudder was like 12 miles in the mountains. Up in Aspen. I yeah. Think. Beaver, and Creek, Beaver, Beaver Creek. Beaver Creek. Yeah. And it was like, I'd run a mile at the time. Yeah. And I was like, but, but it was that mentality. But like, so that's when I finally, like when I, like I had that after everything I'd been through, I had a no quit attitude. Right. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. I don't, I don't. And as we showed up and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Yeah. But I know I'm going to start. Right. And I know I'm going to finish. And the details in between, we'll find out what those yeah. are. You and know? So, <laughs> yeah. All, I, think, I think we had one guy put his hand up pretty early in the race and, and excuse himself from mm-hmm. the team. Mm-hmm. Um, but the well, rest, that shit started. We ran down the hill and then it was a motherfucking right. uphill. Like the tough mutters that are at these yeah. ski resorts, they use the elevation as an obstacle. Right. Yeah. So they, they'll do you up and, and down like, the mountain. And this was, this was 2011. So this was before these things like really hit their stride. Right. These were new back then. If and, you're wa- um, if you're watching and wondering what they're pointing at, there is a, a plaque on the <laughs> yeah, wall that says that. "Tough Mudder, June yeah. 25th, 2011," yeah. where the whole team signed it, and there's some pictures of of the team was, that that com- that participated in this. So if you're watching on YouTube, that's what everyone well, we're, keeps pointing. We're, at. we're literally talking about the changing point in my yeah, life totally. from the guy's perspective who yeah. changed my fucking life. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, it's, it's fucking weird. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but yeah, that was a. Uh, and I don't, I don't remember the course too much. Or Me neither. It was, it was but just, what, I, um, what I do remember is at the last obstacle, which was the electroshock, we all stop because it, it just takes a minute for everyone to get through the obstacle. You kind of stack up in a line, and then they run you all through. Yep. And we wait till the whole group, 24 of us, is together. We did this thing in like four hours or just shy of it, which was... Yeah, we did pretty damn we good. We did pretty and good. I was, and um, I was amazed at how 
well I was doing on yeah. that leg up there. And my wife, like my, my, my girl, like Shelly ran it with us and Jay and Tina and like all yep. this whole team of, and so it's also, no, the whole team was the shit, man. It's they the were first so time warm my, and welcoming to me who had been isolated for right. years. And it was, cause we, like we were doing training runs in Denver, but nobody met him before. Right. And they just knew it was an army buddy. Yep. There's and a guy Tina came out. Mm-hmm. And so at the end though, and what was, what I was watching this whole time is as we're going through this course, Derek is at the front of the group the whole time. And you can see like these people that are my friends being like, is this the kind of dude that you were in the military with? And I'm like, yes. But mm-hmm. like, imagine a whole bunch of them and you're just trying to keep up, you know? And so we gather up after that last obstacle and Derek takes us across the finish line, and Deanna's got a video that she shares, and it comes up on the memory wall once in a while of her cheering him on, and, like, the, he takes us across, we get our bands, and, like, it was actually the the rest of the weekend where people were like, who is that guy? And I'm like, it's Derek fucking Wida, and, like, I'm telling, De- and, like, we're, we're emailing back and forth, and I'm like, dude, you probably don't believe this about yourself right now, but you have a... People like you have a way to reach and connect with people and motivate people. And you have the opportunity here to do a ton of good. I don't know what that's going to look like for you, but holy shit. And like, I think I, we just started, I started beating that over you, know, you over the head with that. Cause Derek's like, no, no, that's not me. That's not me. And I'm like, I don't whether you like it or not, people, <laughs> yeah, people react exactly. to you. Right. And yeah. like you have, it's all like you, this could be a thing. And so he started to be like, yeah, like this could be a thing. And then we move on to the amputation. Yeah. So the dude, the amputation is a funny story because it was it was short. So we did the tough mutter. That's where that's where we're at in our lives. We're, mm-hmm. we're just, we um we did this tough mutter. That was a cool fucking event. It was so looking at it, June twenty fifth, two thousand eleven, and uh, I was riding that high um, for a while, and then my fucking but you had like the pain yeah. in my leg. I was back on a cane. And I hadn't been on a cane in probably like a year. I couldn't walk without a cane. Right. And you asked me and you were like, why didn't, why didn't you get your leg cut off? And I told you the story of that. Yeah. And you were basically, you were like, fuck that. And, and I remember, um, or my memory of it is, is you said, you know, like you have some friends who do like nonprofit things and things like that. And you said, we'll look into like for, so like we need two things. We need a doctor and we need money. Mm-hmm. And so we'll start looking into finding a doctor and finding money. This fucking guy was going to cut my fucking leg off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> like for I'll real. watch a YouTube video yeah, and figure out right. how hard can it be. It can't for, be that like, hard. Like right. No shit. And like that was, that's how it went down, right? Yeah. And like you, you remember I, I, saying those I things? Worked, I worked with, I mean, I worked with a guy, Justin, <laughs> still a friend to this day. <laughs> yeah. And Justin knew Phil Knight of Nike and like, or knew was through a couple degrees of separation. And Justin had friends who had money and he's like, let's just raise the money and get it cut off ourselves. And I'm like, we can do this, Derek. And and now in retrospect, what we didn't know is like, we could have been setting Derek up for like financial ruin without the support of the VA. But but this is how it, but this is how it happened. Like they were, they were taking the initiative on that. Yep. And you know, I was just kind of like sitting back and waiting. Sitting back, waiting, and, see and I'd email them updates. Like, here's where yeah, we're at. Yeah. This is what's happening. We're talking to this guy. And so I, and and so I said, no shit. I was like, since they're doing that, I have nothing to lose in going back to the VA and just seeing, yeah, if they'll fucking do it for us, you know? Because these guys are working. I was like, man, I should probably do my part. And I think we even said, tell them that we are yeah. raising money to cut your leg off, yeah. and if and they then, don't do it, mm-hmm. we're going to be forced to tell this, people that yeah. you didn't cut and this I, guy's and I, leg And I told the guy, I was like, hey, this leg's coming off. This right. shit's getting like, cut off. like, you can do it right. fucking here, or we, we're going like, to take care of it. And it was, um, so yeah, so like he, that, because of that, I went back to the VA, because I had given up the argument for a year and a half. I right. argued with the fucking army I mean, you at that point you'd had twenty six surgeries or something. Yeah, and so into like so that I met with that guy in November two thousand eleven, the doctor, and it was the same doctor who in two thousand nine was the final no. He was the final no, and they wanted to save because you had a functional ankle. Yeah, it was just yeah, it was just yeah, it was just it was just. But they got to go through the knee before you get the ankle. But saving saving the limb is the normal human response. That's right. But they didn't. But I'm not. Normal. <laughs> Casablanca. <Yeah. laughs> Casablanca. Casablanca. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that was, um, but so because that was like a no shit story. You were fucking sitting there, 
um, hitting up your contacts and we were going to cut my leg off private sector. And that would have been a fucking disaster. At long term, that would have been. <laughs> yeah. Because every, every time you so, broke a socket or broke a leg, yeah, yeah. you yeah. had like, to pay for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I went but back But we didn't to, know that. But yeah, no. <laughs> but but like, that's the thing. You just fucking try shit. Right. Start fucking trying shit. You don't, um, you don't know how it's going to turn out. So I went back to the VA and, cause, and I went to the VA because I said, if they're doing all this, I can do my part. And um, to my surprise, that doctor said yes. Yeah. Doctor said, "It's yes. like okay, you've suffered enough. We'll mm-hmm. we'll cut it off." Yeah, mm-hmm. thanks, guy. But it was, but it was, but it was this. It was this um, um, relationship. It was these interactions. You know, Sean started up that Tough Mudder team, and I joined it, and that got me focused on something Other. forward. It, yeah, like, I stopped thinking about fucking killing myself. Yeah. that goddamn time. And then afterwards, my leg hurt, and he was like, "Why don't you cut it off?" And so it was a conversation with Sean that. Like, this is how influential you've been in my life. The, 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 these are the things that put me on the path that I'm on now. It's fucking yeah. well, it's I th- wild. I think what's important for people to know is, like, it's nice to p- believe that this is all altruistic and things like that. And I wanted to help you, but, like, there was, a, there was another person in the water here that was drowning, and that was me. Yeah. And the best way that I could save myself was to feel like I was supporting and in the service of my brothers, you know? And so by Derek reaching out for help and me reaching back and him allowing me to help him, because some people, if, if I had tried to like get Derek to join, he said, no, I was like, fuck, leave me alone. At that point, I wasn't going to beg him to right. join, you know, right. I had my own problems and, yep. but he reached back. And so by him allowing me in his life to try to just help, it made me feel once again, like I was a part of something and yep. I was doing something that mattered. And even if it wasn't my nine to five job, this mattered and this helping this guy and helping myself mattered. And so we were sort of pulling each other up out of the muck, dude. You need to know that too. So, yeah. and so the amputation was December of six, 2011. So it was the same year as that first tough mutter. Yep. I'm going to take a pee and then yep. I'm going to tell you some bullshit that Sean pulled. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we're back. I had to pee again. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, uh, there's a lot of, st- uh, so hold on first off, like, Amputation. Now we're up to December 6, 2011. Mm-hmm. Um, you've, uh, you, you forced me unwillingly to cut my leg off. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, know, just, you woke no. up and I was down yeah, there with yeah. a hacksaw. Hello. Yeah. I we, saw we, this on we, the we internet. Made no right. fucking jokes. I, I, I'm pretty sure I, I, I must have like, because I'm me, I must have said it to the doctor. I was like, if it comes down to it, like we'll we're pre- it we're prepared to fucking bring a saw to my leg. Yeah. Put him on my the train fucking track. garage. Yeah. So, um, but you, you flew up, you were there, flew out to Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. You were there. I just Um, felt like, like Derek has had, has always had an amazing support system in his family, his mom, his sister, and his dad, um, especially his mom and sister. And so it was not, it wasn't that Derek was alone in this, but as anyone in the military will tell you, there's just something different about having a military buddy or someone like it can't be understated at that time you were this person in my life that, or, you know, I, I have, I've always, um, or you were, uh, I was, I think a lot of what I was doing at the time was like trying to make you proud of me. Or I just looked, I, I looked up to you from yeah. the time we were in the army. Like you're fucking Sean Ensley. You were like the E4 that was like doing the goddamn thing, you know? And then I didn't know what happened to you because when I was in the army, we were fucking busy. Right. You know? Yeah. We lost and, track. Uh, yeah, but I I always looked up to you and I always respected you and admired you and now you're this guy in my life who's <clears throat> yeah you were helping me a fuck ton at the but time. But it's funny because I, like, I was just trying to make you proud. Well, man. and that means that means <laughs> like, which more is, to me than you, you know, probably know, dude. But it, it is interesting to hear you say that because like I suppose I could have been pushing too hard, like because like I I kind of do that. I'm like a bulldozer a little bit where I push, and so I suppose I I, I never thought to think like. Am I, what do I know about what it's like to be an amputee? How do I know that that's any better? Right. So what am I, who am I to say like you should do this and cut off your leg when I have no experience other than to think that like, it must be better but, than this. But I, I yeah. remember, I because remember this, this sucks. sucks. So <laughs> yeah, but, but I remember you asked like, what's your situation? I told you the story and I told you 
how hard I fought with him. To yeah, co- that's like, right. This is what he I did. This is what I want from yeah. the beginning. You know? Is yeah. what yeah. you yeah, wanted. What, like because he's, like, he's like, cut it early. off and send me back to the line. Like right. guys, like, let's doing... fucking go. Like right. I, and it was so dumb because like, and they had, they had their good reasons for not doing it, but they didn't understand how fucking. Yeah. Well, like you said, the doctors are doing what doctors do, which is yeah. they want to save the limb. Yeah. That's right. Like, no, they're not right. Fuck that. Let's that. go. No, Cut right. it off. Let's go. Yeah. Right. Let's, let's let's go do war things. Save yeah. the man. Fuck the limb. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'll fly out, and uh, it'll be like also like the the experience. I'm like, this has got to be like a weird thing. And so I'm like, I'll just go out there, and maybe I can help. Maybe I can just be around. And I actually brought that um, signed team poster. Uh, to put in his recovery. Oh, room, nice. You know, and like his leg lamp and like a little couple yeah. of treasures and stuff. Like I remember that. you flew, you must have flown, uh, you must have flown it. You flew in late at night, yeah. the night before my amputation. So it was the night before my amputation, you flew in late and we went to the fucking gym. Yeah. I remember we, we were, we were at, in. we were at lifetime fitness at 1130 PM and I was thirsty and I was like, Hey, they told me not to drink anything. Do you think I can drink this Gatorade though? And you were like, yeah, that's probably fine. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's probably I'm just fine. Like medical yeah. professional. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I went to vet school. Right. As your so, attorney, yeah. I recommend that you drink. So we were working out the night before. I was fucking nervous, dude, because at the end of the day, like you're about to willingly get your leg cut off in the morning. <sighs> right. I was going to wake up tomorrow and have my leg cut off, you know, yeah. like, yeah. And, and it's just it was like, and, and, I, and there was no way of me knowing whether or not I was making the right decision. Right. Because there was, there was other options available to me for life. It's like I was, you know, I was going to school and I have a passion for other things. Yeah. Um, it's like I could be a college professor or I could have a job or something like that. But I just could not accept the limitations of my leg. And I think from my perspective, seeing you push yourself to train and then execute that tough mutter, I'm like, I viewed it as like, this is the only thing holding this guy back. It's the only thing holding him back from being this. I don't know what he was going to, I had no idea he'd be who he is now, but I'm like, it's the only thing holding him back from pursuing his next big thing, whatever right. that may be. Yep. And so I was like, it's gotta be, if we could just get this albatross off from around your neck, like <laughs> yeah. you'd be free to pursue. Yeah. Those we things. fucking did it. It was yeah. weird. You it did was, it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, but, 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 it, but it's, it's, um, I never forget how big of a role you played in that because it was you guys. It was like, you know, so, um, yeah. So you flew in the night before we worked out cause I was nervous. That's what I do when I'm nervous. As I go exercise, I drink a Gatorade and I got my fucking leg cut Which off. Leg cut off. And I'm, they're wheeling him back and I had a disposable camera. Right. And I'm like, we want to get pictures of this. Fuck yeah. And like, they're almost back <laughs> to surgery and I go busting through the doors and they're like, do not enter. And I'm like, hey, hey. And the, the nurse is like, easy. Just really? And yeah. Oh, and I, yeah. so I gave her the camera <laughs> and was like, get us some pictures. And she's like, Okay. Like I have, I have like, a oh, photo yeah. album right. where it's like a step by step of my amputation. Of them cutting his leg off. It's so and the doctor funny. was just like, like, who are these shit. meatheads? Yeah. You know? right. like, mm-hmm. But he did. He took pictures for us and and so we got that. And I'll never forget they wheel this dude out and he's there's his stump wrapped up huge and and then I'm just like Holy shit. Yeah. He just, I'm like, he what just, have I done? He just cut his fucking leg off. <laughs> <laughs> what, what have I done? Mm-hmm. Just sort of like slinking back mm-hmm. out of the Right. Mm-hmm. Good like, luck. Mm-hmm. Well, we're committed now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then staying there that week and, you know, they, he had had MRSA in the military. So they were trying to put him into a room with a patient that had MRSA. And I'm just like blocking the door and be like, go get a doctor <laughs> yeah, and they can come tell me that this is what yeah. you're going to do. And like, <laughs> and just being there to like, again, Deanna and Katie up in the mix and Kevin up in the mix. And they, it was again, awesome for that, for me to allow them to bring the, me in and treat me like family. And like, this is a very deeply personal invasive thing. And yeah. they, they never made me feel like I was intruding or that I was butting in or that I shouldn't be there. Cause I'm not a whiter. I'm an, right. you know, and so, but it was just like, I'd, I'd sleep in the, in the hospital room or I'd go back and sleep. I think I slept in your apartment at night and then I'd come back yeah. in the morning. And I don't remember fuck all about you, that. Yeah, and he, yeah, he's but, riding the Dilaudid train the whole yeah. week. Yeah. <laughs> and also like the, the tough thing for Derek is his metabolism. Like he would process pain medication so fast that he was always getting behind the pain. And they're like, we can't give you more. Right. You know, but his body's just cranking through yeah. it. So I, you know, that just was a super hard thing for me when I was at Walter Reed and I got, um, and in my initial injury, um, we could not 
get on top of the pain. And it's like, I'm not a, I'm not a super huge pussy. Right. Pain, pain hurts, you know, yeah. but it's like, I had to get on a ketamine drips for, for 72 hours. Like those, I, I just go through that pain medication. It didn't put a dent in my pain. I don't remember too much of the amputation, but, yeah. or you don't remember. And it was funny. Much. Cause like yeah. that week, I mean, we had some, you know, he's housing like Philly cheesesteaks from the, the first thing he does when he wakes up, he's like, when's chow, you know, he's just like, <laughs> and like, you know, I think, uh, his, coming out, coming out of like the anesthetic or like the, when they, when they finally got into his recovery room and like, he's awake and he's like, when, when can I eat? And like, yeah. when can we yeah. eat? Did I, um, I remember, I remember getting wheeled out of the OR. I, I just have this like really quick glimpse um and there's a picture of me and i was yeah. smiling when i That's came out or i was just year. like that shit eating <laughs> grin that <he> yeah. has. <laughs> i was just overwhelmed i came out and all you guys were there yeah to see me you know and then um yeah that was fucking i was like and we just do this right like oh, just shit. like yeah helping him get to the bathroom on his crutches and like he he's just figuring out that he doesn't have a leg anymore right you know yeah. and and a couple times he'd like kind of start to go over and I'd have to catch his face <laughs> and pull him back. There's down. nothing yeah. there to stand <laughs> on. Right. Like easy buddy. And, uh, and then like end of the week, I remember them removing those bandages for the first time. And like, he's got a zipper of sutures running all under his, in, yeah. like, that stump for them. And they, he got a tough mutter. Tough mutter was giving away free tattoos. Mm -hmm. And so after that 2011 one, he got a tattoo on his bad leg. And it was above his knee. And like the big concern going in was like, am I going to lose my tattoo? Right. And so they kept it and it's intact on that stump. Yeah, still got the Tough Mudder tattoo right yeah. there on my stump. That's my, yeah. that, that tattoo on my stump is from that Tough Mudder that yeah. year. Yeah. And then that was the first time like they started lining you up with a prosthetist. And like that week while we were there, while I was still there, they started putting you in, in, yeah. in, um, what are they called? The top part of your prosthetic, like sockets, sockets, and, they and started, shrinkers, and yep. all that shit. And like, yep. dude, yeah, it was. Um, it got brutal. I mean, you you couldn't be there for. Um, I, I moved back in with my parents because mm -hmm. I had the apartment. So I got my my lease was up in December, and I got my leg cut off December sixth. Um, and I just um, I needed care. And so I opted to move back in with my parents mm -hmm. again, which is a weird, like, you know how you got, you, yeah. you got, you got retired from the army and then right. you don't want to be with your parents. But I lived with my parents for like a year after I got shot, but actually I, I lived outside in a tent. Did so you really? Was, yeah. So it's like, you know, I was like, oh, I don't have PTSD. That's some real, nope. except Crazy I'm living in a Vietnam fucking system. tent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> which like, is totally I, normal. Right. Instead of living inside the house, I lived outside in a tent in their yard. Yeah, with a that fucking sounds, lantern. Sounds fine. And, uh, yeah, but well, it was just normal. Like, yeah. Hooch. Yeah. I, and, it, and it was a weird thing because <laughs> I let him have a I space. Literally, like I was uncomfortable with the comforts yeah. that a house provided. It was a weird thing, you know. Right. But there was no reintegration training back then, like it is not. Like they're getting better at it, you yeah. know. And yeah. it's not a discredit to them then. Doing it's the best like, they we could. We fucking volunteered for that shit, that's right. you know. Um, but it was just, it's like look back and laugh and like, oh, I think that's. PTSD type shit. Yeah, you know? a, little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. a little bit. But um, I, I moved back in with my parents because I was like, I need I need help with this shit, you know? When did I share with you our plan for the next summer mm -hmm. to keep you motivated on your rehab plan? So that's, here's, here's the fucking <laughs> funny thing, man. I got my leg cut off December 6, 2011. And it was, it was sometime in your visit and you, yeah. how long did you stay after? Stayed for a week. Okay. So sometime in that week, Sean was like, oh, by the way, in six months, you're going back in the mountains, bitch. And we're doing a fucking tough mutter. Nice. And I right was back like, in the saddle. Yeah. So six months, like I was like, oh shit. But dude, that was that was the most amazing thing. And it, because it was like, oh, I don't have to learn how to walk. Exist again. <laughs> I have to learn how to do great shit. Right. Yeah. Right out of the fucking gate. Yep. And so yep. so it was like PT wasn't good enough. I hired a personal trainer. It was like, we have something to fucking yo, we got this amazing mountain to climb. Yeah. And it was a cool thing, but yeah. it's also like really fucked up. It's pretty yeah. fucked up, but <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's fair. Yeah. But I but, also but that's know how, how we you, live. Well, I know that's, that's how, how you, we, that's how you are. I'm like, yeah, you know, like, Derek responds to that. I'm probably the guy that's like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> right. I just had my leg cut off. Yeah, Thank we, you. Yeah. you know? And Derek is too stupid to quit. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's no, like need a to, good fucking right. plan. I need to be in a race. I can do that. Yep. Right. And, uh, and so sure enough. And so like, you know, he, I'll never forget the progression. Like they moved him pretty quick. So leg cut off. Uh, here's your socket. Here's learning the, like your old C leg. So that was a high, like before you got your auto box. You're supposed this. to, you're supposed to. So I got my leg cut off in December. 
I got my first leg early March. Okay. And uh, you're supposed to do two weeks inpatient physical therapy. And I went in the first day and I was like, hey, I can stand on this and I won't fall. Can I just leave? And I hired a personal trainer at the gym and his name was Chris. Um, I fuck up on his last name. is like Baths or something like that. But like really cool dude. And he's about your fucking stature. Big dude. It's like same kind of fucking thing. Um, and we um, learned how to walk and sidestep. Like so my early days of training as an amputee was um, stupid, foofy, dumb training. But and, and like the mistake I see, I see guys now. Um, they lose their leg and they try to be me now right out of the gate. I'm like, oh man, my, my, my early days of training was learning how to walk. I learned how to sidestep, right. shuffle Up and, down and like stairs. learning how to like, well, no, just walking sideways, oh, okay. walking sideways, doing karaoke, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like karaoke sideways. Yep. And then it advanced to holding dumbbells over my head and walking. And I'm, I'm talking like three pound dumbbells right. and l- learning how to walk sideways holding dumbbells over my head, learning how to karaoke with three pound dumbbells over my head, learning how to bend down balanced. And even it was like really foofy, dumb training, but we were training for this tough mutter. And um, so that, so like once again, I think that one was at Aspen, Mm -hmm. which is an even bigger mountain. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was it not? It was Beaver Creek again. Was it? Yep. So we did, we did two Beaver Creek and and then then Aspen later. Okay. Yeah. So this was, um, so I was training. So like once again, um, Sean and the Tough Mudder were my fucking focus. It was yeah. just like this weird, stupid fucking goal. Like it doesn't mean like when you cross the finish line at a Tough Mudder, nobody gives a fuck. Right. But it's it's what it means to you. That's mm-hmm. right. And it it fucking saved my life having that short term goal. And um, it, here's a, a really cool thing is like I um I showed up to the Tough Mudder and I told you, and I said, hey man. Like this tough one is twelve miles, okay. And at, at the, and uh, and I and so this was in June. In June again, I'd been I'd been I got my first leg three months ago, and I told you I said and you hey. had crutches on your backpack. Yeah, well, I, like so, as yep. a backup plan. Mm-hmm. Right. So I had I had my assault pack and I put crutches on them, and I was like, I don't know how we're gonna do this. And I told you I said, um, the most I've walked, the most I've been able to walk on broken so far is one mile. Okay. <laughs> and then you said get as far as you can and we'll take you the rest of the way. And that's what, that's what he said. Like I show, I was like, this is do, do your best. And when you need us, we're there. And so it's like, I think on a 12 and a half mile course, I think I made it in my leg about five miles. Sounds right. Yeah. And then you guys carried me for Good, about you two miles. You but you crutched got, at some point. You too, guys right? carried me for a good while, yeah. like about two miles. And yeah. then I crutched. The rest of the way there. Yeah. yeah. Did so you have a, just, were you on a robot leg at the time or? The sea mm-hmm. leg is just sea like leg. a hydraulic, mm-hmm. isn't yeah. it? I was on the uh, Oser SNS, a swing and stance leg. Okay. It was like, it's like the straight AK-47 yep. of prosthetic limbs. Like just there's nothing fancy mud, about right. it. Mechanical it's, yeah, lockout it thing. It fucking works in the mud. Yep. Um, yeah, but that was like, uh, I was like, that's, that's brotherhood right there. And the it's way like, the course hey, was laid out is as you're coming up this hill, there was a rope, and on one side of the rope, you were on the downward portion of the course where you only had like a mile left. Mm-hmm. And on the other side of the rope, you still had 10 miles to go. We looked at okay. that motherfucker. And like Derek's kind of like looking at that, and I'm like, no, nah, man. I'm like, you get as far as you can, and we'll hop on our back, and we'll get you. And so that's what we did. We had, And it was some of the same squad from the year before, but also some new guys. Yeah. And people were like, wait, Derek's coming back out to do a race. And I had to like fend people off because all of a sudden it was going to be like a – 40 person team, right. you know? And, and so, <laughs> and so, yeah, we just, uh, we did fire. We just like, and it's like being carried for those of you that have done Indian, like fireman carries and stuff. It's no chore for you either. No. Be, if you're on the back, yeah. like, it's not like a pleasure cruise. No, you're you holding know? on. And we're holding his stump, which I'm sure just sucked. And, and so sure enough, we would just, we, one person would, Derek would jump on his back and you'd go until you were tired and they jump on the next guy's back and go until they were tired. And we just did that. And then after a couple uh, miles of rest, Derek's like, okay, I'll crutch. Yeah. And I, I felt bad riding the, I'm like, oh, I was, dude, I felt like a, I felt so weak. I was like, I'm not pulling my share of the team and things like that. And right. like, oh man, these people have to carry me and things like that. But like from the other person's perspective, it was like an almost like an, an honor and a privilege Absolutely. to fucking help me and that's out. What I, which I, is, like, and that's what dude, I like. That's, that's the kind of shit that makes you want to fucking cry, man. Oh, like yeah. People like that exist. There were people that, that ran ahead of our part of our team because they wanted to do like a personal best. And I 
to this day, they're like, my biggest regret is not staying and having the chance to like do that that part with you. Right. We were on and that fucking mountain for eight hours. Long that time. Day. Like seven, yeah. seven and a half hours or and something like that. And some of that is because people would stop us. A lot of people were stopping us for pictures. <laughs> They're like, we want a picture. Who is this? And this is, this is 2012. Guy. So this is. You're not on IG. Nothing. You're no, you're nobody. Yeah. nobody. But they're like, they're looking like, who is this maniac crutching <laughs> up this hill with one leg? And they're like, can we get a picture? And he and Derek being Derek's like, of the course. The Denver you know, Post like, was there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, but you're slowing my time down. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And I, trying I, to <laughs> I think that the big, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I felt like looking at you that time was where you started to realize, like, this is my gift. I can, I can turn my brain off and do amazing things and inspire people. And he also became less uncomfortable. Like, before when I'd say, Derek, you're a motivating motherfucker, and it would make him nervous. Or like, nah. And this time he's kind of like, thank you. Like he's starting to believe in, starting yeah. to believe in himself and believe that 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 is his gift that he can. That is what he can continue to give to people after the service in the military is over. So my revelation from that was, um, yeah, because people were calling me an inspiration and things like that. Then and I didn't, I didn't. I was just a dude trying to live my life. You know, yeah. I didn't get. I I wasn't there to motivate or inspire other people or something like that. And I didn't, I didn't think that highly of myself, but I remember it was that, it was, it was that Tough Mudder and that amount of attention and like the Denver newspaper and mm -hmm. Tough Mudder media and things like that. And that's when I realized, I was like, you know what? I don't have to personally believe that I'm an inspiration. It, the other person's perspective matters that's more right. than my own. Right. It's like, if that's how they fucking see me, then I need to respect that. And all of a sudden that's, like a responsibility and I shouldn't shit on that. Mm -hmm. I should, you know, it's like if, 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 if that's how they see it. Okay. Cause you if know? you can and be it, that it, it doesn't, somebody. it doesn't matter what I think. And then, and yeah. that's, so my big thing, um, after that, you know, I start, that's, that's kind of when things started for me a little bit, you know, and I always, and I, in my whole vision or what was going on in my head is like, okay, well, if I can be to other people what Sean was to me, that's a fucking meaningful existence. Yep. You know, it's like what, what you did for me, if somehow for some fucking reason I'm that person for someone else, that's that's a new meaningful existence. Yeah. Like that's a fucking, because like what you did for me was so impactful in my life. It turned my life around mm -hmm. and you probably didn't, think you're in a position to do that for someone or something yeah, like that it just, just happens in weird ways it just happened like but i i did i will say like i i did see that it, i would my goal was for you to find some happiness i didn't want you to kill yourself because i wanted you to know that there's stuff on this side of the fence that is worth living for but as i saw you lean into more of this i'm like and actually if you're trying to figure out what your next thing could be you should look around at how people respond to you and realize that that could be your your thing. So I didn't know it, but I mean, I saw it and I'd like to think that I sort of helped you to see that part of yourself, but you did, I mean, it was all you, man. I mean, you're the one who did the work and, and are out there, but, um, it's just an honor to even be a small part of your story, you know? Yeah. But you're such a huge part of the story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Getting Which huger is, by the year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's fucking crazy to think that this was nine, 10 years or yeah. nine, eight years ago, things like that. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to, did you move out after that? Yeah. And I'm going to talk about that after I take a pee real quick. We're back from another pee break. Um, we ref refilled on our drinks. Um, so yeah. So after, after that tough mutter, I, uh, Actually, I moved to Denver a little bit before that Tough Mudder. I moved. Is that right? So this is how this is how important you were in my life and things like that. Like I moved to Denver to be closer to you. You were such a yeah. huge. Um, and I'm not big on role models. And um, clearly, influences. you can't pick one very well. <laughs> 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 but like, but uh, but but you were you were you were you were a very positive influence in my life and I just I, I I there was more I just I just wanted to be around you to to like learn from you more and things like that but I'm curious so like we're in it's um 2012 like where are you at yeah in life yeah great so it's funny like this is one of those things where it was such a it was kind of a codependent relationship because 
I was very feeling very good about myself from watching your progress. And I, you know, and you were very selflessly being like very open about like, Hey man, you're helping me a lot. Right. You know? And to hear that and have that validation, I'm like, yeah, man, this, this is great. Like this is good for me. So and that, I, that made you feel good. Yeah. And so like, like, I remember yeah. you telling a story about how you were still in Minnesota and it, I don't think this was happening. I don't know if this happened then, but you, I think you got another dust up or something at a bar and, uh, or you were telling me about how you had in the past. Right it, before I got my leg cut off, right. I was facing felony assault charges. Right. And you're yeah. like, you're like these people I hang out with think it's funny to get me drunk and spin me up and then like turn me loose in a bar and stuff. And I That's was a like, horrible group of people. I was like, who with? are these people, man? <laughs> like, Holy shit. Whoa. <laughs> and so I was like, you know, dude, like, I've got, and like by this time he had been plugged into my circle of friends in Denver and they loved him and welcomed him and they wanted to be around him. And, and <laughs> the, from my perspective, it was interesting because this group of people, they were just happy people. Yeah. They were just happy people. And I was so fucking miserable right at the time. But like after getting, you know, like I met him on the Tough Mudder and then I got my leg cut off. I was on, I was, I was committed. I was committed to making my life better mm -hmm. at this point. Yep. I was, and I still had my run-ins and I want to talk about one of them here in a little bit. Um, but I was, I was, I was committed to making myself better. And this was a fucking happy group of people. Yeah. And they were, they were so goddamn positive. Yep. And they were active. Yeah. Yep. And they gave a shit. That about, shit's contagious and too. And they gave right. a shit about, dude, what was weird is they like, they cared so much about me. I was like, how the fuck do you guys care so much about a fucking stranger? Stop what questioning it, Derek. Why do you care yeah. about, why do you yeah. care about people? Or I wanted to go, I want, <laughs> right. I, I just wanted to go be around them. Yeah. yeah. I needed and, that. And I, and I was like, look, dude, I mean, again, amazing support system in the Wida family. I cannot, that can't be understated or overstated, mm -hmm. but I, I will say, like, it's different than your peer group. Yeah. Your peer group needs to be that way, too. And, like, your mom and sister can't have the same influence and impact over you as your peer group. And so right. I was like, you know what? How about a change of scenery, dude? Nobody out here is going to make you get drunk and fight. Right. <laughs> like a circus bear. You know <laughs> right. I mean? Bet on it. <laughs> right. Like a uh. caged tiger. And so, and uh, selfishly, I wanted him around. And I also thought, like, I'm getting so much out of this. And, um, but also, and so like, you know, so yeah, I, I was like, yeah, what if we moved you out here? And then when he was like, yeah, I'm like, sweet. So like I lived in this part of downtown called Uptown. And when we came out, we found him a little place that was like walking distance for a crutching distance. That apartment was legit. And it was like yeah. the size of this room. dude. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, it was, my <laughs> apartment was tiny, but it was, a, it was but in the, perfect for it Derek. Was, it was yeah. in the basement of a building and they fucking tore off the wall. So it was just like exposed brick. Yeah. They made it like for that. you. It was, I mean, there were, there were kind of little so right. He yeah. likes, yeah. You know, he likes <laughs> yeah. like little spaces, but so he, he moves in. And what I remember about that time is now I was starting like you, you, persevered you'd gotten your leg amputated you'd done and then we do the second tough mutter and now now i'm sort of starting to like you're like what do i do next and i'm like well now i'm kind of out of i i didn't know that we'd make it this far right you know I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, cut your leg off as running, far as i right, thought this yeah, out I'm running out of ideas <laughs> yeah. and you know like i was like i don't know man go to school i guess like get a get a, a college education which is not a bad piece of advice but it's also not I mean, that's it's a great piece of advice because uh, uh, if you have the GI bill available to you, so like veterans who are getting out and the GI is available to you, it, it, it can buy you time, right? It, it buys you paid time. Like you're getting paid yeah. to go to school, get an education and you don't have to know what your fucking next move is. I, but while you're just learning and figuring things out, they fucking pay you. They do. I wish they were a little bit better about how they let you use it so you could taste different things more rather than well, having to commit like a to flight, a degree like a well, program. No, well, so yeah, there's, exactly. there's, there's vocational rehab, which is, so there's, there's the, the post 9-11 GI bill, which yep. is college, that's universities. But then there's voc rehab through the VA. Yeah, you still um, have to have a plan though for those. A, a plan, but it can be it can be weird. Yeah, you're like, I want to be a musician. I'm like, all right, well, you have this available to you, so yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was like your 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 advice to me at the time. So was, I'm like, I don't yeah. know, go to school and like and like Derek. It's funny, man. We were laughing about this yesterday. I'm like, Derek is kind of a he's a persona and he's a he's got a character. I think that people respond to him now on social media because he is very authentic and like 
you do get to see the real Derek Wyda. Like, he, right. he does laugh at his own shit harder mm-hmm. than anybody else does. Yeah, he does, <laughs> yeah. he does like, get, he, like, he understands his jokes better than anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, I mean, I remember, like, being so proud of how he is just an open book about removing the stigma from, like, mental health and, like, hey, you know, my life probably looks pretty good, and I went and checked myself into a to a safe place last night just because I felt a little out of sorts, right. a little overwhelmed. Like, I'm like, that is why people love this cat, but... Um, you know, with him, with him moving out there, I was like, uh, he's one of the most well, like he reads, this guy is a voracious reader. He thirsts for education. He thirsts for knowledge. And so, but he's also the guy that goes into a class and like questions the professor or like reads, reads the material. And like, he's supposed to get one thing out of it and he gets another. Right. And so, you know, he's a philosophical guy and he's like a learning, he, he, I mean, he has books from Plato and stuff up there that I can tell have been opened at least once. And <laughs> people don't expect that from that's me. Right. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's, that's con- my it's, secret. It's yeah. contrary to the, you know, the, the moto um, CrossFit Ninja and all that stuff. So, but I was like, go to school and figure it out. And around this time in my career, I am sort of stat. This is 2012. So I'm stagnating a little bit at the distribution company for skincare. It's fallen apart a little bit. One of the owners has been bought out and left. Um, and I'm just like, sort of like, man, what am I, I'm struggling here. I don't, I feel like I shouldn't be doing this job. And, right. and that's my first fear of like, what am I going to do with my life? And so, uh, and like, um, I remember having this moment where like, it's really hard to let go of a branch until you have the next one, you know? Yeah. And so I'm like, I don't know what I want to do, but I know I don't want to do this. And finally my, my badass, uh, now f- I think fiance, Shelly and I are engaged now okay. at this point. She's like, just quit. She's like, just quit. Quit your job. We'll figure that's, it out. That's I like I'm, her. I love, I love Shelly's mentality. Like, she, yeah. I, like, you know, you think someone like me by that point would have all this confidence in myself. But when we're talking about the confidence that you need to go do a, tw- a 12 mile ruck march or to go face down a nasty Nick or do something like that is a different level of confidence than like, I need to go learn this profession that I have no idea what I'm doing. And if I fail, I'm going to, I could lose my house. I'm now my, now I'm engaged. So it impacts my wife, my fiance's life, not just me. Right. And it's scary. And it was the first time I felt scared professionally. And uh, so I quit. And as soon as I quit, a good friend of mine, Patrick, uh, he knows who he is. Like I had an opportunity for me to go work for this, uh, this company doing stuff that would kind of get me back into the special operations community a little bit from a support. Like they worked on ISR platforms that were utilized by soft guys. Okay. And so ISR means intelligence surveillance reconnaissance. Like the so, dudes yeah. up in the plane, they do like staring. the eye in the sky yeah. stuff yeah. and they do like that kind of spook stuff. And, um, and so I was like, Oh man, awesome. And so like at, but then there had been a problem with me regaining my interim secret clearance because when I got out in 2007, I had been arrested for joyriding a golf cart across the Auraria yeah. campus yeah. in downtown Denver. Yeah. And um, I can laugh about it now, but it was sure. pretty serious at but the that's, time. But that's what fuck. So like I just and I like I don't want to get you too sidetracked, but that's what fucked me up is like right. when I was in college, I had this idea. I wanted to go be an interrogator or something. But my criminal record that I racked up, right. it was going to bar me from right. the job that so, I wanted to do. So it's the same thing with so you. So coming like back in 07, so and you're, you're kind of in a, when you're at Fort Bragg or you're at Benning and you're, it's kind of like this boys will be boys, like acceptable behavior to, and as, as long as you don't hurt or kill somebody or flip your car and you right. know, or like, but like if you're steal a golf cart and drive it around and the MPs catch you. They're going to take you back to first sergeant. First sergeant's going to smoke you till you barf and yep. like keep it out of your record. And then you know? everyone's going to laugh yeah, at Yeah, and then it's like, you're an idiot. Don't do that again. Yep. And so I kind of, I come back to Denver and I'm like, oh, you know, this is like good timey stuff. And uh, we're, we're coming home from a preseason Broncos game and we'd had, we'd been drinking. We didn't drive. We were walking and I jump in this golf cart and start driving it around this community college campus. And I get arrested for that. <clears throat> and it ended up being kind of a deal. <clears throat> and so flash forward to 2012, I have this job, conditional job offer from this company working from with my buddy doing this kind of dream job. And they're like, you just need to fill out just your anything to get back involved. Back, get, like, just, like, this gets me closer. Yeah. And like my immediately my salary was going to be doubled because I'd felt like I'd kind of been getting short change on that a little bit for right. whatever reason. And, and so they're like, just fill out your SF 86 and no problem. You get an interim secret. <clears throat> and what I didn't realize is if you, when I had a secret in the Q course, I didn't have to do an interim secret. I actually had the secret clearance. Well, an interim secret is it just like a pass fail 
grade on a test. So they look at your interim, to get your interim, they look at your answers. And if you've answered yes to some of these specific questions, there is no interview. Yeah. There is no talking to your neighbors and peers. Oh, yeah. it's you answered yes, you're out. Done. Yeah. You're disqualified. And so, so they asked me, like, did, they're dude. like, in the last five years, have you been contacted by law enforcement? And I, it was like within a month or two. And I was yeah. like, you know what? I'll just say yes because I can explain what happened. Dude, being, being honest on those applications fucks right. you. I, like, what? Somebody, like, so I'm like, I, my, can, I, I, just have, I have a lot of friends here in town who are good people and they try to get on the fucking. Um, Las Vegas Police Department, Metro, sheriffs, things like that. But they did something. Yeah. What is so, contacted but, by the police department? You've been man. arrested or, yeah. Is there going to be a record of cops stopping you or talking to you? And so I answer yes, think it's the right thing. I think I can explain it away. And so it I get a call. I don't forget I was out. I think I was out with you in Caldwell. And I get a call and it's this recruiter from this company. And she's like, uh. Sean, we have to pull your job offer back. You got denied for your interim secret clearance. Ooh, just like ringing in my ears. Yeah. Going to be sick. Like what? Because I, I had had this job lined up. Like I thought it was a done deal. So I'm putting money on the credit card and I'm just living normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. buying furniture. Yeah. And so. House ain't closed. Right. And so that was a big pivotal moment in my life where I'm like, oh shit. Now I'm, now I'm in trouble. What am yeah. I going to do? And so um, I went to a, there was a veterans career fair. Uh, first of all, I have, I freak out. Then I pull myself together and I'm like, what are my options? There's a veterans career fair up at Mile High Stadium. It's so funny for me to hear you talk about Coming your, undone. your life story. Cause I just, I like, I associate like, or cause I've, I've just always looked up to you and I was like, this is a guy who has it all figured out and put together it's just an and you're just like running you're around just like, trying yeah, to figure trying it out figure it out fat yep. boy in high school yeah. and you like yeah, you man. know like um and then and then now this it's just, it's just yeah. like you know man but you but but you have a no quit mentality and like i mean at that point it was like now i'm not even pursuing something that's my passion but it's like back against the wall yeah I, we're gonna I, like, we're in trouble here if i don't yeah. get a job mm -hmm. so i go to this career fair and i'm like i'll just get it i'll just find a safety job you went to a career fair veterans career fair, no shit where like they bring in ball aerospace and raytheon and mm -hmm. lockheed martin and oil and gas and strad and all these pay and you just walked around and talked to people i just had my and resume said, really? and i walked around and uh, i had my resume so you're fucking hustling man trying like yeah, yeah. Dude, you're like and uh so <laughs> this is such a wild part of my story i i walk so level three communications which is a, at the time was a big fiber optic telecom company up in broomfield they have a booth and i'd heard of them before and i go up to talk to the guy and the recruiter there is looking over my resume and he's like second three two five 82nd airborne he's like my son is at the second 325 right now oh, shit yeah what are the odds yeah like right mm -hmm. yeah and he's like he's like looking at your resume i mean you don't have any telecom experience you're completely unqualified you no for idea. this job right, right. Yeah. but you're hired yeah. but he's like <laughs> can you tell me what this is and <laughs> nope right? no nope. so, so he's like, have the capacity to learn <laughs> he's like yeah so he's like i am here looking for these specific roles of which you are not qualified however there's another, I know there's an opportunity with this other organization, this other org within level three. Let me, let me put this resume in and see what they say. And I got a call back from it. And the hiring manager for that role, the only reason I got a call back was because he was an 0331 Marine machine gunner from Desert Storm. Nice. And he's like, look at this grunt. He's like, that, two, to, that 240 yeah, is a right, heavy bitch, ain't right. it? <laughs> this dude must need a paycheck. Right, right. right. If this, if he's like, this motherfucker's to, applying for this job, yeah. he just needs a paycheck. He's like, I just want to get eyes on this idiot. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> and so, so he, I just uh, want to have a look at this fucking guy. So, yeah. he, <laughs> so I go in for an interview, and I you know, I wear a suit, and I go in there, and I sit in a room with like his team of managers, like seven or eight of them, and they're just like, what is your experience with this? I'm like, I have no idea what that is. Uh, and like, what yeah. is your experience with that? I'm like, I don't know, but it sounds like it's probably something that could be taught. And I'm a pretty quick learner. And uh, this is like a board where you didn't study. Exactly. Like, you're just yeah. like, yeah. I have Should've no idea. Jumped in there and held my four count. Yep. Until the first <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Nate and the hiring managers on the phone, he's not even, he didn't even bother showing up. He's just following, phoning it in to hear me. And yeah. so I, to hear him tell it, and he's now, a, a, he's continues to be a mentor and a dear friend in my life. And, and this is the guy I know. And I you know this he's guy. He's fucking Nate. legit. I love he's him. legit. Yeah. And so to hear him tell it, 
all of those managers were like, he's really nice and he's got some good business aptitude and his attitude is great, but he just doesn't know anything about the business. And I don't know that we can afford that. And Nate was like, well, we're going to give him, we're going to hire him because it's my call. And if he sucks, we'll fire him. Yep. You know? And so I've weighed into this new career field and like, which is, uh, so this is, um, technical infrastructure. So if you think of like telecom as like two tin cans and a string, we build the string. Okay. So we're actually running the fiber yep. and, and plugging in, lighting all the gear and, and providing you guys internet for your cat videos. So. Good, perfect. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. It's like, oh, Derek. Yeah. Like all my dumb shit. That's, right. thanks. You, that's your fault. You're yeah. riding my It's your fault. Right. It's so. your fault. When Stacy yells at me for dumb shit I do on the internet, it's your fault. Totally. You, you gave me the bandwidth. That's right. Yeah. And dude, those, those first three months, it was like, I was like, I'm going to, it's like how people self-select at selection. And when, when, did, you, when did you get this job? Was that would have been two thousand, it would have been October of 2012. Okay. And, um, people at selection self-select where, you know, part of the challenges at selection is they don't give you any feedback. They don't tell you what the runtime is. They just tell you to do your best and follow the chem lights. Yeah. And like when you come into the corral, they, they just write something down that you don't know what they're writing and people cannot handle that. Right. Yeah. And they start to think I'm, blowing this. Yep. I'm not doing good enough. That guy was here an hour before me. I have to quit. Yeah. Before they before they cut me. Yeah. And you self-select. And yeah. so I was in this environment where I was totally out of my depth, did not know it was and this guy would run by and be like, I need this, this, and this, and this. And then he'd be off down the hall. And I'm like, huh? And so and like everyone's speaking in acronyms and I don't know what they're talking about. And but I just kept kicking. Yeah. Treading water. Pet as hard as I swimming as hard as I could. And I'm like and I, but I did think like, I'm going to have to quit before they fire me. And, uh, I mean, I had that job for two years. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, dude, I fucking love that mentality. I fucking love it. This is a good, that's like, that's the real, that's the, um, that's the story, man. That's the, or that's the, just the right mentality to have. Yeah. And that job but ended it, up being the springboard for where I am today yeah. was all because of that. All yeah. because of that one. That's because, right. Yeah. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, man, fucking it. And so around that time, you're going through school, but you're also like, I don't really like school. I yeah. remember you being like, I don't really. Well, for me, yeah, because like, so I was living in Denver. I must have moved back to Minnesota in 2013 there That's after right. the uh, after the semester got up. And actually, um, so um, we'll get back to um, what your more of your story. But there was a there was an incident I had. That I, I really want to talk about. So like, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I don't give a fuck. It's I'm open about my past with, um, um, suicide ideations or encounters or whatever the fuck like that. Like I've, 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 I've wanted to kill myself so bad so many times, but at all of those times I didn't, I didn't do it, you know, but it was, so it was this, it was like this weird in between and there was a really good or it's a story worth sharing, I think, because this was a huge turning point in my life. Um, I was living in Denver. I was by Sean, and uh, I was just, like, fucking, I was fucked up one night. You're having a a bad night. Super bad night. And it's, like, so, like, to be clear, it's, like, for me, and, like, getting blackout drunk is is a, I can't. I can't get blackout drunk because that's when I want to fucking, that's when I'm out of control, and that's when I want to kill myself. And this was, this was a night in Denver, and I was just, I was too drunk, and I just was like freaking the fuck out, freaking the fuck out. And like, it's worth saying that I was very drunk because that that's a common thing, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't and I was fucking blacked out drunk. So I don't know your perspective of the story, but I just know I was freaking out. My mom called you. You came over to my house and you said something so dangerous to me. Yeah, this is and not a this so is not a recommended course of action. Right. Tactics, but it, but it's it, not a it, one size fits all, man. No, but it definitely worked for me, and it right. made me it made me feel. I feel it, like we should it, repeat that. Do not just blindly use this tactic. Right. With people <laughs> yeah, that you don't know. <laughs> Disclaimer, like, don't, don't, right? To, to like straight up, like when I give people advice, I'm like, don't use like the same th- the things you did for me, or the like the things the things you said to me that worked for me. They were all dangerous. But maybe sometimes that dangerous advice advice works for it people worked for like you us. Yeah. because I because I by that point I knew you, yeah. And by that point we'd overcome so much together, and I and yeah. I knew that you were in a better place and just having a bad night. Yeah. That I felt okay doing this, but I again it's like 
two, so years, my er- memory, two years earlier, I would not have done this. So my memory, right. my memory is right then. That's right. Okay. So yeah. So I was. Um, I mean, the verbiage might be here or there, but it's the, the he, he, message he, was the same. Here's what I remember. It's like, um, I was I was freaking out. I was at my apartment and I was like threatening suicide, or I was just overwhelmed by like sometimes I get overwhelmed by the thoughts of suicide, and I don't even want them. Right. I don't even I don't even want them. But I'm just overwhelmed by it. Intrusive, you know? intrusive thoughts. Yeah, and um, they're they're uh, back then. It was like a maybe twice a year type instance. Mm-hmm. You know, it was happening which, less which, and less. Yeah, yep. which was like that was progress. You know, um, but I remember you came over. My mom called you, and you came over and you told me. I'm just and I'll just, this is how it went down in my memory. You said, Derek, if you're gonna do it, do it. If you're not going to do it, stop doing this. You're hurting people. You're hurting your mom. You're hurting people that care about you. Like if you're going to do it, do it. But if you're not going to do it, stop doing this. And it, but like that, and that, that fucking spoke to me because I didn't want to die. And I knew that I was just fucked which is up. Why yeah. I was okay <laughs> yeah. saying. So it. I was like, so that was like, stop hurting people that I love or stop hurting people that love me. And I also right. said, said like you calling your mom who you know is 2000 miles away and can't do anything. Scaring is, the is fuck cruel. out of her. Like you, you could yeah. have called me, but you yeah. called her because you wanted a certain kind of like, reaction yeah. or indication. I'm like, it's bullshit. Which is, yeah. And I said, I don't think that you want to be dead. Yeah. I was like, but if you do, that's your choice, but you should not be calling people that are powerless to help you and hurting them by doing that. It's a, it's a, that's a weird thing. And that's, that's a, something like, I feel like a certain kind of shame about that. Cause it's true. It is, it is, it is weird. It's odd, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> but we're not always in control of right. our shit. Um, and, and that, and that was, um, that was the last time that it went down like that. And I did. I, I remember saying, I'm not going to take your gun tonight because I don't think that you're going to use it. And I, But I did take it apart. Yeah. But that's, <laughs> the firing pin was fucking right. missing for sure. But that's, but, that's, but that's a crucial point because, like, if you, like, I would have seen that as an aggressive move. Right. Or like, oh, you don't think I'm in control right. or something like that. And, like, right. it was so, it was so, it was so perfectly done. Well, luckily, well played. I mean, 50, 50, man, you know, yeah. that could That's just as he, easily been yeah. like, I read it all wrong. Right. You <laughs> blow your brains out. Yeah. And the next day I'm like, yeah. Ooh, Ooh, but there's a, but there's, I, but there's a personal responsibility in with all things. And, and you taught me a lot about that, and, you know, and, and like in, in the years after that, it's like, you know, when I struggle helping people and things like that, it's like Derek, you can only do so much. And at the, That's right. At some point, it, in the road somebody has to stand the fuck up for themselves or that's that's one of the best things you taught me man honestly and that was early on in like 2010 or 11 and it was like nobody can make your life good but you it's true and i was because i was Statement i was all fact. fucked up about the past and things like that and holding on it's like dude you are in complete control of every bit of your life mm-hmm. and it's um i like that worked for me i needed that and I like hearing your story because you got thrown fucking curveball after fucking curveball, right? And you just kept going, and you just you just well, have I, I think you just you just understood what, that, right? I think and, that's what like I I probably never bored you with the details of my challenges, but like yeah. when you say like when I messaged you and said, "Hey, man, I'm a few years ahead of you in this game." Yeah, this is what I've learned. It's because of these the trials that you're hearing about now, the losing the job, the losing the, the dream, like the being lost. I'm like I've been through it. And so I know how I got through it, which is just like, wake, just showing up every day. Yeah. And some days are better than others. And you find something in that day that stands out for like a good reason to keep wake up the next day. And pretty soon, one foot after the other, pretty soon you look back and you've got a series of days together. How far it comes along. That's right. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, so I just, I, but I didn't want that story to go untold. I'm glad it, it worked it out the a, way it did. Yeah, <laughs> like it's dangerous. It's but now so swung so, wide so, on that. So, now, so right. like now, people ask me, they're like, "Hey, my friend is dealing with fucking suicide. How do I help?" And I think about the things that that help. Right. Yeah, exactly that. Right. I'm like, are they seeing a psychologist? Yeah. Or and, and if somebody says like, "I'm struggling. What should I do?" I'm like, "Go to a psychologist. Right. I don't it, like. I can't." And I'm not being lazy. Right. It's not that I don't care. It's that, or I've seen a psychologist regularly for the last last fucking. Goddamn 10 years now, yep. you know, 
professional help is legit. That's that why shit there. That shit fucking helps, man. That's right. But um, so when people ask me though, they're like, "What worked?" I was like, "What worked for you?" I don't like, know. If I never can mind. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry about you it. You know? Yeah. But it. But like that. Well, and the only was, reason I was comfortable saying it was that I had seen where you were. And I knew that these, like you said, these things were happening less and less. Yeah. Thing, good things were happening to you, but you still had not found yeah. the fulfillment. You yeah. still didn't know what you were going to be next. And I didn't know either because I can't tell you that. Yeah. All I can tell you is you just keep working, keep showing up. And pretty soon you understand what they're talking about at the new job in telecom. And pretty yeah. soon you're making a difference. And pretty soon you're ready for your, your big, you know, luck I've had people tell me that like where I'm at and what I'm doing now, I'm like very lucky. And certainly some things have gone my way, but luck is when preparedness meets opportunity. Yeah. And you have to be prepared to seize and that opportunity. When risks it involved That's in right. the moves you made. That's right. And, and a lot, and it wasn't and some, always clear that I was going to Sometimes land. the move you ma moves you made were like out of desperation. That's right. I mean, you went to a fucking career fair. <laughs> God, right, man. did you like no, have to wear a condom while you walked around? Is that like, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's legit. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do something like that. Well, and I'll tell but you, that's like, good but fucking advice. It, like, and it was, yeah. a, it was a desperation move, but like, you, you know, people get mired in like what they're going to do next. And like, you have to decide, like I took that job in telecom thinking I would, I would have that job to get a paycheck while I figured out what my dream gig was. Yeah. Right. And as I got into that space and worked with, with those people and studied under that guy, I was like, this is actually, I like this work. Yeah. Like I like, it makes sense to me. It's technical, but I don't have to be a software engineer to do it. Um, it definitely takes some ac acumen and aptitude um, to, to pick it up, but it's not insurmountable. Yeah. And I was having, you know, making more money and seeing this more side of like a true corporate life where I had actual vacation time. Cause I was working for a startup, that distribution yeah. company was a little, com I was the third employee. Mm -hmm. So it was cool, but it was like, you know, you know, the, 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 the no stock options, no yeah. equity, no, no you're not vested in yeah. it. Or, Can we yeah. talk about who you work for or work with now? now? Things like, like, yeah, I work for a company, uh, out of Mountain View, California called Google. Yeah. I don't know if anybody <laughs> yeah, has heard of it. Are they the internet people? Yeah, I think so. Uh, okay. Wait, he, you made fun of me for still Googling stuff the other no, day. I but said, no, I said... You like to ask uh, Jeeves so yeah. or what? He goes no, to dude, the Google. It's, it's, Google. it's all like I... do. you're... Um, and as far as I'm concerned, like you made it, man. Like you have such a... It's it, you, it's interesting though because uh, I, I mean, this is a huge... Like I've, I've been now... So in 2014, that... Same mentor and friend left level three, went to work for Google, gave me an opportunity to come over as a contractor. Yeah, you had to fucking earn your key. Shelly and I, I had, remember how stressed you were at right. the time. Shelly yeah. and I had just doubled our mortgage, and I and had done so on the accounting of like what I was making at my old job. And this guy calls me and he's like, "Hey man, I have an opportunity for you." And those don't very come, risky. Those opportunities do opportunities do not come without risk. I cannot promise you. I remember this conversation forever. It's seared in my head. I remember where I was when I had it. It's like watching when the towers came down. I remember yeah. exactly where I was when this happened. We're renting an apartment. And my wife's works. They, they manage properties and we have an apartment there. And I'm talking to this guy and he said, these opportunities don't come without risks. I can't promise you that it will go the way that you want, but I can promise you the chance to try. And so again, looking to my wife, now wife, and she's like, yeah, bet on yourself. Go, whatever. I mean, like to have that partner in your life. Oh, yeah. When I'm like, I don't know, like this is like the no, the safe bet over here. She's yep. like, yeah, but this is the big thing. Yeah, worst case scenario, we're broke and we don't have a house. Worst case, we're like, homeless. Hey, yeah. Fucking right. try that right. shit. Yeah. Jump. That's and I'm best. like, okay. And so I did. Yeah. And so I contracted through another company uh, at Google for three years, kind of learning the business. Um, I moved out from under Nate, under a, a different woman who was my boss, another incredible mentor and friend and leader. And, um, and again, just with, with no, it, no guarantee of when, because the promise initially was. I remember this shit because you, you were like literally fighting for your future. Right. At the time. And this is, and a, it's a hard. You didn't know how it was going to pay off. That yeah. place is, it's as advertised. It's really hard to get in there. Yeah. Like, and you have to be really, really good at what you do. Mm -hmm. And so I worked for three years as a contractor building up a reputation and getting people to know me and waiting for my chance. And then I got my chance and I interviewed, had to do six interviews. Each one was an hour, five or six. 
each interview was an hour in one day. And by the end of those interviews, I'm just like, I don't even know if I want this job. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is, a, that's terrifying, you yeah. know? And I, I got in and, um, and now it's, you know, they, people talk about like, it's the hard, the easiest thing is getting your tab or getting your trident. And the hardest thing is keeping it. Yeah. Um, and I feel that way at where I, at, at Google, like I, every day am surrounded by the smartest, the best, the brightest, and I am the dumbest guy in the room sometimes and yeah. having to, I have to work harder than they maybe do to, to be able to call them my peers. Yeah. But it's an incredible place to work. The culture is incredible. It's also been my first foray into like having any sort of like diversity in my professional life. Yeah. You know, cause right. I'm, historically I've worked with people who look like me Yeah, and, and sound like me. And so it, it's been great. And, um, but yeah, that, so where I am now, Started in 2012 with a leap of faith at like a panic job, it's just and it I, and it's I just persevered. And again, you can't focus on the five year plan because you'll tip over. Yeah, you got to look at it a day and a week, and that's such a cliche, but it's cliches are there for a reason. Like that's true. Yeah. So it's, it's weird how it fucking plays out, man. Because I like I'm I, and like um over the years, you know, I've been busy doing my fucking thing, and you've been busy fighting. F- like for those three years you were fighting, you were working long working ass hard. days yeah. because still do. And it, it, well, like, sure. Yeah. But yeah. like, but now but like that was an interesting, that was a lot of pressure. It must've been a lot of pressure for you at the time when you were kind of like trying to prove yourself. It was <laughs> yeah. because I was, I was definitely positioned like the other people that came over with me for those contracting jobs were senior people that had been in telecom for a decade right. or more. And then here's, I'd been in level three for 21 months. Yeah. And so I was sort of like <laughs> yeah. feathered in there as like, oh yeah, this guy, you're getting him for cheap, like yeah. whatever, and we'll yeah. see how he does. And so, yeah, that same thing. Like it's a whole new pressure cooker. It's not a physical challenge, but it's a mental thing where I, I couldn't self-select. I couldn't say I'm not good enough to be here. I had to just believe that I was, and I had great support. Like my, 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 my the people I worked for and with mm-hmm. helped me. Yeah. But I mean, I had to, I had to rise to it and be prepared for that opportunity and then meet it. And, yeah. And out. That's cool. I'm gonna take another pee break. That's the problem with being uh, well hydrated in the desert here. I pee a lot, a lot. You, like so. I but can. you're you're older than me, and you're older than me. Yeah. Do you guys pee a lot at night? I'm, I'm not as much as I should. I should be drinking more water. I should really? definitely be drinking more water. Yeah. Oh fuck! I, I wake up like three times a night, and I have to pee. Oh so God! Like, really, I, no. I wake up maybe once if really? I'm hydrated. Yeah. And then so, but so I was like, and Denver's is it because I'm hydrated, too. or is it because I do I have? No, you're you're right. Do I got to get my prostate? You got to get have, your butthole have checked. Have you had a fucking? <laughs> have you <laughs> got have the you whole had, hand up there, Doc? Have you had the prostate check or something no, like that? I need a, so I need. A, I did a physical for the life insurance that you made fun of earlier, and then uh, <laughs> and then. <laughs> but I did not have to get that exam. But I'm due. I mean, I just turned 41. So so it's time. I asked about that, and they had said that they do the majority of it with a blood test now that they can screen for stuff. That's and you don't have, have you to get. Been, have you had the test? Well. Uh, no, not since like. What is the test? They feel any, your does, prostate. They yeah, stick your fingers that, up your ass. And that means in your butt. Yeah. Yes. Right, so right, actually, yeah. dude, deep oh, in your butt. Oh man, dude, I had a fucking, I had a weird. So I, I put my liners on, right? Like mm-hmm. I, like I have my prosthetic limb, but I, I rub, I, I, I put my liners on, and sometimes they're tough, you know. And I just like pull really hard. Yep. And I slipped the other day. You slap your nuts? No, I put my thumb like <gasps> right at my butthole, Finger and it was weird. It was weird. Yeah. Anyways, like yeah, right. nobody, nobody ever needs to know Stop short. that kind of well, shit. Now lots of people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've but, told. I, but it was. I was like, <laughs> oh shit. Yeah. Was, but I laughed about it. You know, and it's just me by myself in my room putting my liner on, and then I'm laughing because I put my thumb in my butt. Hey, nobody so. needs to know that kind of stuff. But um, um, you know, I was, I just wanted to thank you, Sean. For coming here and and telling us um i mean that was your story that was and that was cool it was a lot of it was it was fun for me to listen to a lot of things from your perspective and i i guess like just um you know it's interesting it's a question you've you've watched me over the last five or six years and you know what i'm doing and things like that now and just like what 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 is what is my life the last five or six years been well how, how do you perceive that or like you you watch me and like what do you what do you think
think? How am I doing? I, you know, like, like, <laughs> give me your approval. I, how, like, I, like here's here's my peer review. Right. right. Oh, it's yeah, my yeah. peer there review. What uh, and what can I do better? Please, right. feedback please, is what can I do better? Feedback is a gift, man. That's for <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, dude, it's interesting question. Like, uh, you know, when when you moved out to Denver and and we're going through that thing together, like, ultimately, I knew like long term, uh, it's got to be the closest thing to like having a kid where what you want for your kid is for them to go out and find their own happiness and find their own path. Yep. And I gave you some guidance. I gave you some help. You helped me. I'll ultimately, I gave you some advice and it's, you know, that was advice based on what I thought was best of like going the traditional route of college and job and figuring it out. And I just knew that you would, if you persevere, you, and you figure things out, you'll find yourself at the end of the road, happy and, and fulfilled and doing things that matter. So honestly, it's like when you sort of, when you moved back out of Denver and, and then, you know, we, we still found opportunities to work together and, and we will always be in each other's lives, but it felt a little bit like I was letting you go. Like yeah. you, you know, you, I'd, I'd helped you fly, fix, yeah, fly gotta, free gotta, little yeah, buddy. Sometimes just want to be a bird. That's fly it. Far, far away. So you fixed yeah. your little, you fixed your little <laughs> wings and I re-released you into the wild and, uh, man, I just like my expectations have been exceeded. And that's not to say that everything you've done has been right or perfect, but like you've acknowledged that part of yourself where you're like, you know, during this time I was too high on my own, like my, on my own awesomeness. And I learned from that. And during this time I did some things wrong from a business perspective and I've learned from that. And so now I'm just like a proud older brother watching you go about this because like I had no idea how to monetize and, and turn what you love and your passion into a profession. I had no idea how that worked. I mean, Instagram, I don't know how that works and yeah. all that stuff. And so I'm just, uh, I mean, I'm proud your journey is far from over, but like now, like we're entering into these new chapters in our lives where you're a dad yeah. and you're a husband and I'm, you know, I'm about to be a, a dad myself and yeah, you're, it's a, uh boy a little boy nice. in, a, in a september yeah yeah are you having just one or are you gonna have more that's a good question I he's like just pro- one probably like, should mr. Ask. yeah mr like they do you know his story with kids they it went sounded like he has a bunch back to back to yeah. back to back yeah right yeah right so oh. two of them are irish twins like yeah. we just yeah i kicked the doctors out and <laughs> we we're like let's get it going but here comes your first here comes the first end of september and I just like could not be more ready for anything in my, my didn't, my dad didn't have me until he was 41. Yeah. So like he always wrestled with like the idea of being an old dad. Oh, that's cool, man. You know I've, I mean? I've wondered that too. Yeah. And I've only come across one other guy who, um, do you know, Owen is also 41, 42, yeah, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42, 42 yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, my dad, he was like, oh, I'm an old dad. And, uh, it's funny, like, you know, he's which too- is a different way to say a very smart, wise dad. It is. And like, I think <laughs> in his mind, you know, like I, I will say like uh, genetically and uh, like the, as a human, you're probably, it's probably like in your better interest to be a young parent because then you can like go without sleep and like jump up and, you know, yeah, oh, yeah that's a hard sleep, part. No problem. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> like now I'm like, that's going to hurt a little bit. You <laughs> yeah. know, and stuff. But, but you know that going into it, which do. is the, and fucking- so it was cool. One of my dad, my, one of my dad's favorite stories was how one of his students at Cherry Creek said, yeah, but Dr. Ensley, like your kid's not going to have to worry about you changing jobs and moving and, you know, and being uncertain in your future and wondering where the next meal or paycheck's going to come. Like you're secure in your career. And, um, and that I was feel big like for you over the years. I remember, was, you, and like, I, I remember like talking to you about that, about your life plan, yeah. like fucking eight years ago. And you're like, well, first I just want to get a secure, comfortable I wanna, living. I need to yeah. know what I'm going to fucking do before I can start providing for someone else. Right. I want to know. I want to know that it's, I'm it's cool someplace. that you've, 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 you've managed that now. I think and so. you did it by persevering through all those fucking curveballs and, and life changes and, and it's you know it's the you have to you have to show up and do the work every day and you know like there's like i said working where i work now is a great blessing and i'm so proud and, on, and honored to be there and it just means that i have to work extra hard to stay there um but yeah so being a, like my my dad being older never stopped him and, and me from having a great relationship he, we skied together and hunted and fished and he was my scout leader and my baseball uh coach and we did all those things, and I think in his mind, like you know, you talked about uh, you. We're good. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> yeah. wrong you, button. You, yeah. you talked about today how like, um, uh, you know, his concern was that when I graduated high school, he'd be almost sixty. 
Yeah. But like, I didn't need a, another best friend. I needed a dad. Yeah. And so who cares if you can't go ski moguls with me all day? Right. Like, are you going to be in my life and teach me right from wrong and yeah. show me how to be a good man? Yeah. And he did, he checked all those boxes. So no, that, 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 that kid doesn't even know how lucky he is yet. Well, when he's we're not even we'll born, but like, but no, like we're not going to get it all right, but yeah. we're going to try. Our so, best, you know, you know how, how old was he when he passed? Ma, he was 80. 80. And you were how old? Uh, that means I would have been, 39. 39, okay. That's a good and you're gone. the youngest? I'm the youngest. Okay, because I've done this math. I'm just like, all right, and, and our grandchildren or something? I mean, I guess if they had them really young, I'd probably be able to see grandchildren. Yeah, he got to meet and... my older brother's kids, so he had the grand, okay. grandpa experience and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's, it, I mean, that's it, a it's real thing, right? It's like, it's like total. My, my mom with the boys, it's like the, our, our boys have given my mom new life. Yeah. You know, it's like just to be, so like I keep, I hold on to some things for grandchildren. Right. I don't know if I'll meet them. Maybe maybe Jack will. Yeah. <laughs> Max would probably play the long game, but as far <laughs> as I know him right now, Jack, you know, he might be pretty quick. But um, you know, I was um I'm just sitting here thinking and I was like, I think there's there's lessons to be learned from our story Agreed. together. And I think um, you know, uh an important one is like the the time and effort you invested in me and the way you went about it was just it was life changing for me, you know, and it's, um, and, 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 and some of the best things, one of the best things you ever told me, was like, Derek, you're in, you're in control of your own happiness or misery. Mm -hmm. And you, you, I remember you said that to me early on in like 2010 and, and we're just, we're just closing up and driving things home here. But like, that was one of the best lessons you ever taught me. It was like, Derek, you are, you are in control of your own happiness or your own misery. And that it, you, you reminded me, of my personal responsibility to live my life or like everything was in my control kind of, you know, and, yeah. and or, but, but I think um, the lesson between me and you and we, we, we went on and we didn't talk about it today, but like we ran a nonprofit together and right. things like that. Right. And we, we, we put that time into other people, but it's like, man, it's fucking amazing how two people can build each other up simultaneously yep. yeah. while like I thought I was depending on you and maybe from your sp perspective, you were depending on me and it was just this fucking thing going back and forth. Yeah. And it's like when you actually open yourself up and give a fuck about someone else's life and success, how personally rewarding that is and how motivating it is, you know? And so like, I do honestly try to, when sometimes I get overwhelmed and what we do with it, like the amount of people that are asking for help or advice and things like that. And I just, I'm just like, I want to fucking quit. I want to fucking quit. It's overwhelming and things like that. But it's like, no, Sean didn't quit on me. And I, you know, remember, remember back in the day when I started on this fucking path that I'm on now, I was, it was common for me to say, I just, I just want to be what Sean Ensley was to me for someone else. You, like you taught me what it is to give a fuck about another person and helping them through their hard times and things like that. And it's gotten to a point now where it's like, it's thousands of people. Right. So, so like, how do we service thousands in a meaningful and impactful way? And we, we, we spend a lot of time trying to figure that out while also you're a dad. Yeah. I'm a dad. Yeah. You're about to be a dad, yep. like balancing your own life while giving a shit about other people. But like, I think um, maybe maybe the moral of the story is like giving a fuck about someone else is so personally rewarding and it makes you become a better person. There's a there's another message in there, too. And I think it's 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 to pick good people to be in your life. You know, you obviously picked a good wife. Yeah. So did you. Um, and she picked me back and she so picked you, you back. To, yeah. It's, yeah. It's so, so did I, like, yeah. you guys through life picked each other and you are an example of two people building each other up that can work the opposite way. Yeah. If you pick the wrong people, they can just, you can both balance off each other and yeah. downward spiral together. So, so it's, you so gotta be, I think having the cognizance to understand when maybe the people around you aren't the right people. Right. Like when, like house. when you went out to, 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 uh, Colorado and yeah. you were like, Dude, the people spinning me out, getting me drunk, setting me loose on fights are not the right people. But these people out in Colorado right. yeah. are so fucking happy. Yeah, and that's why so it's like, contagious. Yeah, so like Minnesota was, that's why I moved to Colorado. There. Yeah. But so, um, yeah, 
It's um, good people. And that can be hard. It can be hard to have that uh, kind of presence of mind to look around and be like, you know, these, and it doesn't have to be a contentious thing, but you can be like, these people are holding me back a little bit and people grow apart. People come in and out of your life. Right. And if you, if you're feeling like you're stuck or you're in a rut, have the self awareness to stick, take a step back and assess where you are and who's with you and on your, on, on your mission. Are they, are they helping you carry the log? Yeah. Are they ducking the log? You know? so, and sometimes reaching out like to to kind of uh, inventory your friends or, or right. reaching back to somebody who you've lost contact with can be an example of, of, well, that's of what, exactly and, you guys. And maybe maybe we, we have to talk about it a little bit here is like so we started the next objective together a long yep. time ago, which was a veteran 14, nonprofit. We learned from our lesson how fulfilling what we went through was for both of us. Yeah. And we tried to recreate that for other veterans. And we, we ran our own nonprofit for like three years. And do you mind if I'm honest about why we don't now? Sure, man. Yeah. So like, so like I'm bad with paperwork. I'm bad with fucking paperwork. And, and like, so we ran a 501 C three and we fucking every penny went to our mission and not, not a single cent was misused and things like that. But I personally, me, my fault got behind on the paperwork and we just, you lose the status, lose, lose the, lose the 501 C three status. And yep. so, and, but also it's like, I've been busy and things are growing in the family and IVF and things like that. And you've been fucking struggling to, to earn your job mm-hmm. and then keep your job. That's right. And now you guys are expecting a kid and yeah. you're like, fuck. But, um, we just, we, we want to do that again someday because we learned the lesson of how impactful it is on, your own personal life to give a fuck about other people. Right, and totally. we, and that's, it's a common thing for people to talk about on the internet. Like, Oh, I'm just here to help people. I just want to help people. But a lot of times people say that and it's just a sales pitch and they don't actually give a fuck about helping people. And I mean, you, 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 we learned that I think together. I'd agree. Gro- like just yeah. growing, like growing up in that and what we went through together is like how caring about someone else and, 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 giving a shit about their success. And and to be honest, like, so having you on the podcast podcast is cool for me because I was so fucked up at the time, like 2010 to 2012, things like that. And I was so selfish on my path. I didn't even know. Or like, I kind of knew, but I was so busy with my shit that I couldn't, um, I wasn't there for you like you were there for me. Maybe I was there for you in a way. I think you were. But like in a way, sure. but not as, I was like, hey, Sean, how are you doing today? Or like, Sean, like, 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 I, go, like I alluded to, like the act of service was what may, was getting me by. That's right. the fucking, more, the, the act of service. The act of service is what Any was getting kind me of, by. And you didn't, you didn't have to do anything except be, let me help you. And uh, that was the help that I got back. And, and the, the other thing that we've said is like small, you know, big things come from small beginnings. And so. You know, that was a very, what started as a very small, innocuous thing, snowballed into this yeah. big, impactful, meaningful thing. And that's how a lot of these interactions go. And I think your listeners, like, that's what people need to be more mindful of is like, it doesn't have to be some grandiose act, man. It can be picking up the phone and, and calling that buddy you haven't talked to. Right. In a Anything year, for, yeah. Know? So like a lot of our listeners, I think come from like the military LDO background and things like that. And a mistake I made was thinking, or, and maybe perhaps you too, is like when you get kicked out of the service you think like your service ends, but there's so many ways to serve. That's right. And we learned that doing TNO. There's so many ways to serve. And you're, so you're still people. finding ways to serve the, the people that follow you. And I take a little bit of pride, not a little bit, a lot of bit to see how y- you set the tone. And it seems like the community, the Derek Wida followers community all kind of, for the most part, lift each other up too. Yeah. And I think that starts from you and, and rolls down. I try hard to create that and I love seeing it. Yeah. I don't know why the fuck it happened, but it did. You know, I've but, got, I've got a scary it, eye for it, talent. It's, it's, it's cool. It's cool. That, <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Internet. <laughs> yeah. But it, it is, it is cool to see. I, I, I love that shit. Like when we, like we do the whiter group on Facebook yeah. and, and somebody will ask a question and I love it when I see somebody come in and answer the question. Yeah. It's just like, man, helping each other, giving a fuck about each other. It's such a, it just, it makes it, it's, it's one of the keys to happiness, I think. And so, um, you know, so thanks for, thanks for being here. Yeah, man. Sean, thanks for having me. And yeah, it's good to meet you, man. Great and to meet you. Yep. Thank you. your perspective. And um, it was fun for me to listen to a lot of that. 
or one get to know you more. Yeah. It's fun for me to listen to those pivotal times in my life from your perspective. That was cool, you know. Um and uh man, just yeah. Yeah, well, dude, uh thank you so much for the opportunity and it's great to be on and just really proud of what you guys are doing, man. So keep up the great thank work. Thank you. Cool, thanks. Appreciate it. Um that's going to do it for us here. Two part episode with Sean Ensley. Um, and now we're gonna fucking drink beers and hang out. He's not leaving till tomorrow, so now we're nice. just gonna get some good bro time in. Some steak. Uh, yeah. Um, as always, we love you guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>